Oh, we're live. Hey, that framing ain't bad. How do I tweet about this? I want to tweet about this. Yeah. Mole. I'm live again. That was interesting. I always forget if the archive or if the stream just like stops while I'm in another app or if it saves all of that malarkey that took place just now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guess we'll find out. I hope I'm audible. I'd like to see the... Oh, yes, okay. Welcome to live chat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community guidelines. That's what it said on my phone. Oh yeah, I wanna see all chat. Wish to see all chat, Dankeschön. Aha, there we go. I missed some. Welcome, folks who are showing up. There's eight of you so far, I think. So you can consider yourselves the original eight. Must you be 13 plus to watch? I uh, assume... You know what, this game, it says right here, it's for ages 15 plus. But you know what, if you're just 13 plus, I won't, hey, I won't tell anybody. I won't tell your parents, alright? If you're two years too young for this, okay, you could get in trouble. You could get in trouble, but I'm not going to tell the cops or your teachers, okay? Because I think you're mature enough to handle the power of Satan. And Cthulhu. And whoever else may be present at the end times. 14 plus, mm, the, yeah, Cygnus 7, you're, you're spot on. It's a weird world we live in now, you know? I've got to judge people by their ages. That's the edict. Also, I gotta not hunch over to... The phone is, is well below my neckline. And it's also where I can see the chat. And I am get already in a bad habit of craning my upper torso down in a way that feels like people might sit at their desk like that for 20 years and then develop, you know, a hook spine or something. I wish the chat wouldn't fade away all the time. I wish I could be the one who tells it to fade away on the app. Wait a minute, these aren't Transformers cards. Well, oh my god, I'm on fire. I don't know where you got the idea that this is a Transformers uh, channel. We're here, as always, to talk about the finest CCG ever made. Hecatomb. A CCG, not a TCG, a CCG. So powerful... And so ahead of its time, it was not cancelled due to any kind of modern capitalistic reason. It was cancelled because it was too powerful, and maybe because it was too expensive to produce in the mid-2000s, because you'll see. But nothing capitalistic outside of that pre-production uh, reason. Pre-production, that production reason, not even pre-production. What's going on? I'm just sipping some cola with my stainless steel straw, because I'm one of those people. Anyway... I had some boosters of Hecatomb because I went back to uh, BC earlier this year for some work reasons. And while I was over there, I grabbed my old Hecatomb stuff. Hecatomb, this is my Hecatomb deck box. I actually had one. I wish I had more because it's actually the nicest way to store these cards. But uh, I, have, I have an old rule book here. And this 15 and up game... As here it goes, Hecatomb, there's a definition right here. A large-scale slaughter, a sacrifice to the ancient gods consisting of a hundred victims, a tomb with a hundred tombs in it. That is what a Hecatomb is. Uh, the, the game is, you know, it has rules. Uh, this is Wizards of the Coast, too. I, I can't remember if you can, there we go. It was 2005 Wizards of the Coast, with their address on the back and everything. So, uh, I have a few boosters of this I want to just cut open here, because I thought it would be goofy and funny. 
to take a look at these very strange cards. Because you may have seen me open up Transformers cards, and those are already kind of weird cards, but we're going to talk about weird cards from, from Wizards of the Coast. Uh, we got to talk about Hecatomb. Like Transformers, you know, these booster packs have a backing card. Uh, and then these cards are made of plastic. Who's my rare? My rare is the Executor of Emog. Okay. And you hear that? Oh, you hear that, you hear that peel? It's a, that's a good fresh uh, 15 years in a booster box peel. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the way this game uh, stands out is that the cards are made of plastic. And uh, they have see-through parts. And uh, you can, like, wash these. And apparently the reason why the game got cancelled is because these simply became too expensive to produce in 2006. That's how it goes. Uh, but another big thing about these is that single minions like these don't really mean anything. But they can start doing stuff when you stitch them together into abominations, to use the game's parlance. Whereby you start putting them together like this and you can see I put the blue one on a red one So there's a red triangle showing if there was a green triangle showing I'd also get that little uh, triggered effect But you know if we stick uh, so we, we take this ruin sifter uh, Attach the executor of emog and then upon that Place a weird tick now we can untap target abomination and we can attach a cephalopod uh, And then an untap target abomination and then we got one more stitching space so we can uh, stitch on an Angama right here. And now we've got an Abomination with a total strength of 8, 9, uh, 18, plus all of these abilities. So uh, I think this stuff is super cool. Uh, the game has some limitations. It's, like, it, it's, it's pretty fun, uh, from what I recall. I still have to play again with all my, my stuff now that I've actually played another trading card game for more than a few months. Uh, the one problem with this game is that, at least on the, in these boosters, there's like, you know, parts where the printing doesn't quite land right. And so if you were like a ridiculous card shark, you might be able to start like paying attention to and trying to catch like, oh, there's a little bit of the other side showing here. And I, I know what card that is, except I, I can't do that. No one in my play group can do that. So we can still have fun with these. Uh, and like I said, there's a soul drain. This is like a combat effect. There's four colors. You know, colors, uh, the four, they're actually the four dooms, uh, where's the listing, yeah, corruption, which is black or gray, deceit, which is blue, destruction, which is red, and greed, which is green, so, uh, they only ever had the four colors, they only ever had this base set plus two expansions, and then a third expansion was basically ready to go to the printers when the game got cancelled, so a few years later, Oh, I love that peel. Uh, the, one of the folks who worked on the game just shared spoilers of that entire expansion on Board Game Geek. Small bummer about this game is that it's not very easy to proxy anything. So that, that information, I think, has a bit of a limitation as to its usefulness. And uh, also, as you can probably imagine, these cards are a just massive kidney stone buttock to store anywhere. Uh, outside of, like, a deck box that happens to be perfectly shaped and even has, like, a little rules reminder thing. These are two decks I made that I, I gotta try out sometime. Uh, here's the, the counters for the game. Basically, you're trying to get 20 souls. Uh, everyone starts with five, and every turn you get one. So the game is on a timer, even though when, like, monsters attack and they might fight each other, if they hit the other player, they are taking their souls and adding them to your own. So it's a game of push-and-pull, tug-of-war with everyone gaining one soul every turn so the you know the end the, the end times will come no matter what happens the goal of the game you're an end bringer you want to bring about the end of the uh the dimension you're in so you're trying to the 20 souls represent a mass amount of human sacrifice uh that is necessary to power uh bringing about the end of the world and so you and the other whereas in magic everyone's a planeswalker who's dueling in this game you're all end bringers who want to end the world and then you you know whoever wins ended that world and you all go ah shucks dr cephalax you bastard and then you all go to another world and try to do it again uh i missed a bunch of chat but yeah, this game is from 2005 to 2006, and uh, one of the fun bits, the reason why I want to bust these open, I don't know if we'll pull one, but some of the rares are straight up gods. Uh, they are old gods, so in this first set, uh, it's basically Cthulhu. Um, 
In this case, this rare is a relic. There's also not that many relics in each set, so I got the Unspeakable Talisman. The artwork's kind of demented at times, too. Here's a Breath Stealer, a Needle Shaman, another Ruin Sifter. Uh, have this... Uh, severs minions from an abomination. I love the, the wording on this game too. It's also Watsy, so when things tap, they just tap. But then you have minions who you stitch together into abominations, and then if, if someone removes a minion from an abomination, they don't unstitch it, they sever it. Uh, also, the way mana works in this game is basically a card that you play from your hand in the mana pile, you play it upside down, and it basically just becomes a land card. So this also has that Transformers-ish element of not having a dedicated resource card, although there is, you know, a dedicated resource pile. Uh, do they get severance pay? I hope so. Either that or they get hushed like this. That's just rude. Uh, we got a, we got a Chuteo Teo, uh, one of the Aztecal minions, a being from beyond, a Hadrabor, which is an outsider, an Eviscerator, very straightforward, uh, 100 Lashes, and uh, Hidden Power, dude tearing off his face and it's some Cthulhu underneath. So we got a few more packs of this. Uh, this is, this is you know, as, as I mentioned, this is our what the channel's about. This is our booster shredding stream for the palindrome day that is today. It is uh, 02022020. Got a Withering Mistress is the rare on this one. And I figured, what what better way to I uh, got the Elevator. That's actually a really fun show um, with the uh, uh, the Soska sisters. It's uh, it, it looked like it was going to be really stupid, and then I watched all of it in like one night. It's it's just like a, a horror game show. I thought it was really fun. I uh, got a Daughter of Blood, meddling kids. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, Hypersonic Fiend, I have a ton of those. W one reason why I, I, I bought some more of this game is back in BC, I didn't just bring, like, this back with me. When the game died, uh, Curious Comics over in Victoria, BC, basically offloaded everything they had left, which was, like, eight starter sets and about 20 boosters for a total of, if I recall correctly, it was, like, $8 a starter set and a dollar per booster. So I just grabbed all of it way back then. And me and my buddy Jacob played a bunch of it and, uh, and that was about it for a while. So I have a whole lot of the first wave and the first, and a little bit of the first expansion. And uh, turns out this game ain't all that expensive. So I figured oh, I'll just get some more packs. And uh, that way I can also have a, a boo through what I get in here. And maybe some of the more like worn cards from 10 years ago. Because these things spent at least seven years sitting in a dusty basement. Some of them completely exposed. Some of them I think soaking in a flood for a month or so or i can't remember but uh this way i can i can have really nice play sets and then i don't know what i'll do with the rest i'll throw it at people because they're vaguely circular uh dual masters is, I, that that like turned into another game didn't it like oh what was it i don't remember all the wording dual masters is where some of the transformers folding card stuff came from tamnus the dreamer it's a large monster made of teeth and fat that seems to be eating a naked baby. Uh, Torment. Yep. Is this two cards? This feels like two cards. Kaijudo, that's what it was. And Cardfight Vanguard. Yeah, Ghoulish Reanimator. Bull of Minos. Cryptocaller. There we go, Suckling. That's a good face. Uh, Spirit of Fury. There's a good one. Surrounded by idiots! Oh yeah, Cardfight Vanguard, sorry, that's a that's a different company. Uh, is that like similar mechanics though? I can't I never played Vanguard. Uh, it was only a dream. Creature from Zelo, Brain Surgeon, Winchester Blessings, another solid piece of art there. And another hypersonic fiend. Anyway, got six packs of this left. I just want to open these on, on here because I think it's fun. And then, uh, yes, there is also something else I'm going to open up. I just finished filming Megatron, Siege Megatron's transformation sequence and some of his tank footage, so I got progress made. These cards are making a satisfying noise, and they regain this interfriction if you leave them alone for a while. And on this pack, let's see, because on, on the decks... They kind of get this interfriction that I just, like, crack them, and then they're, they're totally shuffleable. On this one, can I do the... Oh, okay, this feels really cool, but it's not making the noise. 
Oh, hi, Mark. It's called a stream because alliteration is excellent. Also, I wasn't trying to do a bit there. I say, oh, hi, name when people show up. Anyway. Uh, Brain Canister got another relic. Uh, Orthon. Uh, Mr. Bananas. That's some top tier. And then we got us a Roach Keeper. It's a keeper full of roaches, as you do. Uh, 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 Spirit of Fury, more surrounded by idiots. Another, it was only a dream. Uh, from what I read on the Board Geek Game, Board Geek Game, Board Game Geek forums, uh, this game is very much uh, built on the back of its commons and uncommons as far as deck building, which I'm I'm happy to read about. Because when I played this in the aughts uh, with my friend Jacob, we were basically playing it the way we forbidden word. We were playing it the way we'd play Magic, which is make big creatures and creatures go boom. Uh, thanks to Transformers TCG, I've actually started like getting more of a mind, a very, you know, thin onion of a mind for like the most basics of card gaming that is outside of slamming creatures together. So I'm starting to see other stuff like synergies and things. Another relic, Signet of Loki. All abominations have fanatic. That's one of those keywords that's on the uh, the helpful little thing I got in the deck box. Reprocess. Fire overwhelming. Uh, it's basically red, pay X, abomination deals X more damage. Baby blood monkey. Before you ask, regular blood monkeys are also in here. Another hadrabor. It's a regenerator. Uh, some more evisceration. Maybe I am doing the stream just for this... Um, just for this peeling noise. Oh, yeah. I missed something in the chat there. Synergy is powerful, not as powerful as control. What about control synergy? Like hidden power, bringer of sacrifice. The gift of Hades. I just love names like this, too. Five Space Interloper. It did not fly, float, or swim through the air. It crawled along some unseen, obscene shape. Food poisoning. You know, you got your werewolf there who's all like, I'm a, I'm a gonna eat a person. That person's like, well, I eat terrible food. I eat Taco Bell. And this is werewolf's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have had that midnight snack. Hello, Linus. I am opening some card packs uh, from Hecatomb. Uh, my favorite conceptually, aesthetically card game ever made. It's full of pentagon cards that you stitch together. Another relic! Holy crap, Sky Slayer. What is this thing? I don't even know. I'm just happy I have it. I'm a possessions-oriented person. Cephalopod, thank you. Get you a spine. Let's reprocess you a spine. Nothing like good old booster peel. That's right. Another fire overwhelming. Let's do this one slow. The tactile feedback, I can guarantee you, is something that is just as satisfying, and I wish I could transmit that over a stream. Uh, greater Wolfling. See, there! Blood monkey. A for real blood monkey. Let's do another. Yeah. Glimpse of the cosmos. I love this piece of artwork. I loved it back in 05. Mindless Servants got some good googly eyes. I noticed the one drops are a thing. Like, green, greed has just a one strength one drop, but then there's other one drops that pop out and, like, have a... Um, how do you put it? They have, like, a, a price for being a one drop in other colors. Nebrian Elephant. Another Suckling. Noise is worth the price of admission alone. Yes, Gokai Silver. Uh, Hoi Fan, yeah, I mean, these are, these are going to go great with the combiners, I think. Uh, you know, it's tapping into some less known Transformers fiction, but still, you know, some good Transformers fiction nonetheless. we got three packs left here. I'm just hoping I could show you all a god. Like, I got a couple gods. I pulled Cthulhu by myself. That made me happy. Gurog. Okay, what the... It's just a straight-up dragon? <laughs> okay. The Parasite Fanatic Reaper. <laughs> ah, I love saying this game out loud. We got us Ebriel. 
This thing's going to steal your breath, quite physically, quite literally. Needle Shaman, a Shaman of Needles. Uh, these ones aren't as sticky as I was hoping. Uh, got us a Twinned Husk. I'm um, going to victimize somebody later on. A Damned Thing! Uh, by Haki, a Yofaqua, and a Greater Wolfling. Yofaqua is the uh, minion when they brought Alpha Q back in Season 23 of Transformers Energon. It's also something, like, I know magic people get this all the time, but to me there's something really fun about, like, the fact that these packs of cards have been sealed for 15 years, and now I'm opening them... I got. I didn't know there were. I literally didn't know Dragon was a type in this game. King Voltagar. <laughs> That's a good name. So is Flying Polyp. One of them filth rats. Oh, Feculus, the Sewer Lord. So this is a. Uh, this dude is basically. You know how we poop into toilets, right? This thing is like poop. But, like, what does poop poop into toilets? I don't know, but it's called Feculus, and he's the sewer lord. Another creature from Gylo. Another one of them brain surgeons, Winchester Blessing, Hypersonic Fiend, Alistarian! Uh, for, for, yo, don't say that. And Gamma, True Gargoyle, and Soul Drain. One Hecatomb booster to go. Let's do it, kids. Oh, okay, I didn't pull any extra gods, but I got a Vitiosis, a Viciosis, it's Rex Relics. Hungry Chupacabra, Skin Taker. Got some of that Bloodlust, just classic. Another Wolfling. Another blood monkey. So two blood monkeys there. The parents of the baby blood monkey from earlier. Uh, another glimpse of the chaos. The chaos. The cosmos. The chaos comes later. Mindless servant. That's not chaotic at all. Nebrian elephant is full of chaos. Uh, crypt caller. Orderly. You know, they go to crypt. Sucklings. They only do one thing. Spirit of fury. That's some chaos. Surrounded by idiots. Uh, that's pure chaos. So one other thing I bet someone's wondering. Probably, probably someone someday somewhere who watches the archive is wondering is... How do you shuffle this stuff? So I'm going to show you because I figured it out all by myself with my two decks I made. What's this? I don't know. So I'm going to grab one of these. Deck size is 60. In this first wave, minimum deck size was 40. And then uh, after wave one, they changed it to 60. I wasn't there to see why. I assume people were able to break the game a little bit. So because these are plastic... Um, if you want to shuffle them, you do want to first take your deck, give it a bit of a crack, give it a little one of these to get all the, uh, the plastic surfaces separated. And then, uh, basically you just want to keep this, you know, the word in the same direction. But how do I show you this? Let's go farther in. Yeah, let's go up here. So I just try to take two flat sides, you pull them up, and just riffle it. Because they're plastic, I don't feel like a monster riffling this like I do when I riffle shuffle anything made of cardboard that doesn't have the uh, the threaded coating that poker cards do. Hey, let's do one more. <laughs> ah, that is kind of fun. Because I feel like I cracked a code figuring out how to shuffle uh, Pentagon cards. So that's that's my Hecatomb video content I wanted to share. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. We're, as I said, a Hecatomb specializing channel. Uh, we, we focus on Hecatomb strats. You know, we've had 15 years to develop them. and uh, We bring you all the hottest, freshest Hecatomb strats. Uh... For all of you, uh, the 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 heck the heck a crowd. That's what we call our viewers here on the channel, because uh, they're heck excited to be part of the crowd. 
Anyway, a couple weeks ago, I finally got my, uh, how do you call it? I guess press copy of Siege 2. Uh, some shipping stuff that made it take a lot longer than it should have uh, probably taken. But uh, that's all on the back of Toronto FedEx drivers. Doesn't matter now, it's here. And I saved it just to stream because I didn't... I want to stream these things when they're the ones that are press ones. And, you know, damn it, we're going to stream it. So uh, I'm just going to have a go through here. And I'm going to keep more of an eye on the chat now. Because, um, you know, Transformers cards, we know, we know how to do this. Uh, and I've done one of these before. On launch day, I, I went to get my belated prize from my Energon Invitational Qualifier where I won a booster box. And I... Turned it into store credit and carried that over until Siege 2 came out so I could just go grab a Siege 2 box. But now we've got the one that was Watsy provided. This was hashtag... F what's the thing I'm supposed to do when it is a uh, product sample? There's a hashtag that is really dumb. They always want you to say hashtag like f free stuff. I don't know. Uh, we've done this before. You all know how these things work. I am going to open this properly. We're going to, we're going to get this up here. So it looks like it's proper booster box display. Uh, you should go check the first stream I did where I did this, this ridiculously clever, just such a clever bit where I played pretend like I didn't know Trypticon was a card in this set for the whole thing until I got to the bottom because, you know, that, that was a hypothetical situation the folks who worked on this would have liked to see, but it would have driven all of the retailers insane to have to pretend that, or to, to have, be surprised by a pack of cards at the bottom of a booster box. So I'm not going to do that bit again because we, oh, hashtag sponsored. Thank you, wave sign. I'm, I, I don't, I figure if you're going to do it, why be subtle? Just go like, I was sent this. And I'm supposed to... Where, where was that? I still have that letter. Hang on. It's over here. From that Hasbro box. It's the only time I've gotten one of these things with, like, full-on uh, paperwork. But, uh, yeah, with them FTC guidelines. A hashtag free product. That's what it was. Uh, whereas my version of, of acknowledging that this came in was to just, like, make fun of the letter for two hours so let's get going on this left side i'm gonna do the usual thing so i've talked about every battle card in here so i'm not going to go through and tell you about every single battle card i'm going to show you the contents of every pack so that if you are going through one of these things uh or say you want to set up a cube then through this video if you are tremendously patient you'll have information of a collated booster box at your disposal i figure that's going to someday be useful to somebody so why not just begin that right now? I'm only looking for two character cards, by the way. Uh, I'm looking for like two super rares. Surprise, surprise. Galaxy Prime and Lord Megatron are the two characters I'm missing right now. Uh, I also would like to pull a couple opportune offensives. Those are my main goals. Uh, everything else is gravy and uh, stuff to help me build more uh, pre-constructed decks. Because I like to do that. I'm a bit of a keener. Uh, this is a triple changer, so that's not going to be part of that initial thrush. Uh, I do like that the, the folding triple changers, aside from Octane, are commons, so I can just have a set of them folded, uh, chilling in a box. I like having little character cards with me in a little box, just for if I want to try tweaking decks, and so, you know, of course, you've got the Micromasters and, and Battlemasters, and now you got these guys. Just a box with one of every single one that wasn't a super rare, and, uh, they're just, you know, chilling out. I have fun with that stuff. I still have to do a Sandstorm deck. Because this guy is situational depending on what type of target he's attacking. And, uh... That's a very sideboardy thing, I think. But, I don't know. I should mess around with him. The thing I'm liking about the fact that Wave 5 isn't out until, like, uh, April 17 is I think that just gives us more time to play around with the cards and, uh, and build dumb stuff. Or experiment with stuff that is not top tier but is still... An exciting mid-tier. Here's our commons. There's our uncommons. And there's our rare. This is this is a really efficient way to do it, maybe. Maybe. I I don't know. Should I do this or should I just like read them all off? I do like reading them all off. I'll read them all off. Kinetic intense fire web guarded posture, wedge formation, contract contingency, acute reflexes in pocket. Processor. Let's continue. Uh, there was a whole lot of hashtags there in the chat, I noticed. Uh, cards got lots of value. Boof. What's the black symbol? Is that what you mean? 
Fake F1's a Mirage and IndyCar, I guess. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, Sergeant Crosshairs, that's almost Mirage, except that it isn't. Uh, that's an uncommon, he'll go over here. Uh, Hyperdrive, did you see what he did in the new comics? They made my, my boy Hyperdrive matter, I was so excited about it. Uh, the black symbol, do you mean up here on the top right? Uh, so those black pips mean that when you flip this, you get pierce, uh, your pierce value goes up by however many black pips you have. So if you flip this, that attack would get pierced too, which means it would do at least two damage, uh, no matter what the defense flip is. And boy, howdy, black pip, uh, decks matter. Saying black pip decks really fast makes it really easy to almost say a bunch of stuff that, uh, is unkid friendly or whatever. Uh, there's another black pip. Uh, the black pips are actually part of, they're not the, the crux of my Octone deck I ran at the Energon Invitational, but they help a lot. Um, and they happen to be connected to a lot of mercenary cards, which Octone is. Stable cover, fight for position, special delivery, increased durability, triple black pip, plunder, and our rare is opportune offensive. Hey baby, how you doing? I have pulled this four times over the course of nearly 100 booster packs. I've pulled Opportune Repairs 17 times. It's kind of... There's, there's no science behind that, because other people have had the opposite experience when I talk about this story, but, you know, it's nice to finally see you again. Locked down. Uh, Rider Skullman, the rare... You mean for characters? None so far. I've only opened two packs. Uh, so I got an uncommon and a common. And a... And a common. So we're early days, Ryder Skull Man. Hopefully the rare count is ridiculous. Uh, I'm very jealous because our, our in Toronto, one of the stores that's been supporting this game ever since I went there on a pauper magic night that didn't fire and said, hey, you should look into this game. Um, store owner, or the guy who runs that branch, I should say, uh, of Three Kingdoms over at Eglinton, Saul, he's bought some booster boxes for himself. He, he bought a Rise of the Combiners booster box that had two super rares in it, and we're... Um, we're still not quite over that yet, as far as being annoyed. Oh, we got the lower half of six gun. We'll see if we get an upper half. And we got uh, Mr. Barricade, Mr. Crowbar, Mr. Shove a Card in his trunk. Uh, almost used him in Sealed uh, at the Energon Invitational, but only in a desperate attempt to beat Lord Megatron, which did not go very well. I have an Energon Invitational video shot, by the way. I wanted to finish a, a toy review before I put up another card game video, uh, because I stream it so much, uh, and that was that 3A robot thing, and now Siege Megatron coming up soon. But I did shoot a video talking about my Energon Invitational deck and the sealed pool I had, so I'm going to get that put together for next week, I think. Minor Medic Kit, Soldier's Blaster, good stuff for Octone. Kinetic Intensifier Whip, Decipher, Point Position, and Overwhelming Advantage, which I'm, I'm still trying to make happen more often than it should. Helicopters, he knows everything about why helicopters aren't real. Yes, Logos Miner, uh, it is Big Helicopter uh, that is out to get us all with all of their uh, propeller emissions. Uh, let's see who's in here. Nova Storm! I've still not gotten a chance to do anything exciting with Nova Storm. Uh, excited to try to figure something out for her because, like, you know, Black Pip stuff and planes are things I want to use. This hologram looks way cooler in the camera lens than to my own naked eyes. Holy moly. Uh, QI 1994, am I going to do any more World War Robot stuff? I think I will, because that was kind of pulling the cork on, on doing World War Robot stuff uh, outside of the one review I did on Blip way back. And that video, like, I actually shot that entirely unscripted, because I figured, why not just give this a shot, because it's just one little figure. And uh, I, I like talking about them, so I'm, uh, I'm going to do some more, I think. Uh, I'm going to still script a lot of videos. World War Robot ones, maybe I'll do those unscripted, because, you know, you don't have to worry about a transformation. Uh, oh, Daniel, have I purchased an Energon Edition yet? I have not. I got a hashtag free product one that I shot a video for, that once again, I was like, well, I don't want to put up 15 card videos, so I'll hold off for now. So I got to put that up next week as well uh, to get all caught up. And that one, I showed the pulls on the Wave 1 cards, and I did a test with the foil battle cards. And 
basically they're too thick uh this booster pack was reprocess wedge formation fight for position battlefield incursion indestructible sword and involuntary promotion yeah logos minor those loose thumbs were a bummer the 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 portable scale drop cloths just never really worked out uh they're cool but they are by far the chintziest world war robot figures i've ever handled <laughs> Uh, I think their design was just too small to translate down without some engineering ideas that were not present. Uh, I like that they just went for it, though, and were like, no, we'll just do the big one, but small. Uh, hopefully I can open up the palm on that on that one or on my other drop cloth and figure out if I can tighten the thumbs a bit more. Raider Spinister, this guy is also a deck I really want to try to figure out. Night Flight's been doing some work for me as a four-star Uh filler with his ability. He's basically got War of Attrition sort of, and when this fires off, it's actually really cool. Just making sure I didn't miss anything else. Alright. It keeps making the chat fade out, and I should know that by now, but it still messes with my head, because I'm like, oh no! <laughs> Dead silence! Uh, this pack is Head-On Collision, great for Octone, Minor Medic Kit, Medic's Protective Field, Heroic Resolve, Plunder and opportune rip. Hi, I don't ever need you again. But hi, welcome back, number eighteen. Uh, oh, let's see what's in this pack. I still have not found Siege Spinister, and I also still have not found Siege Ironhide outside of a dealer room, and I don't want to pay that price for him. Mud flap. Mudflap, I'm, I'm taking part in that uh, Wave 2 Windblade challenge that the Facebook group is, is doing. Mudflap was on my team for a bit, uh, just to have a Merc on the team to get opportune... Re Funnily enough, this card, which I think really works excellently with Windblade... Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find Spinister. As far as Siege toys, I thought I would have by now that I still haven't found. Uh, still have never seen Ironhide outside of a dealer room. Never seen Spinister, and uh, I've only seen Omega Supreme at a Toys R Us once. And I I really don't want to pay full price for Omega Supreme, so I figured I'd wait for Boxing Day, and then I never saw him on sale anywhere. So I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, special delivery, terrifying resilience, fight for position, energy transfer, adaptive plating. And a lucky vest featuring our boy, uh, Detritus, uh, Detritus. I, I always, I've now jokily done the wrong pronunciation enough times to no longer remember ever, even if someone tells me five minutes before, which pronunciation is correct. I mean, don't, you can tell me now if you want to, I'm going to forget, because I'm going to be like, oh, dead, de de you mean de de detri Detritus? Um, Sigma 7, the one silver lining is I did get Siege Ratchet, and I just got hooked up with, I'm going to pick it up on Wednesday, uh, Siege Crosshairs. So to add to the tragic comedy of my never finding Ironhide, I found every other version of that body. <laughs> but I've still never, ever seen Ironhide. I have never seen Ironhide on a shelf. I've seen Wave 2 on shelves for months, but never Ironhide. I don't understand it. It doesn't, it's not even like actually upset i'm just like the the mathematics of this don't make any sense Ooh, deadlock uh deadlock was almost in my windblade deck i this one i really want to figure something out because he's still a lot like wave one deadlock and that i don't think he's very good but this ability is kind of cool on a big guy and this ability now feels like maybe it's possible with contract contingency i don't know uh, how does the carb compare to the synthetic human? The carb is basically the synthetic human with a modified arm, a modified leg, and a different head sculpt. Uh, and a different other hand as well. So it's just a retool. Uh, this guy's awesome, I think. Uh, the core of the carb, though, and the core of all the new synth figures, is more or less identical to the synthetic human as far as, like, the articulation and etc. and the aesthetic. This is not splitting. There we go. Wedge formation, guarded posture, crowbar, decipher, acute reflexes, and overheat, which I think I'm now on, like, I'm nearly ten of these I've opened. Overheat is also... Overheat and opportune repairs are following me everywhere. Uh, regarding Toys R Us, necromancy can rarely do anything about putrefaction. It's true. 
<laughs> oh, okay, Logos Minor, the Toys R Us, the new T the new TRU in New Jersey smells like a rotting corpse. It's pretty much just a child play place uh, with a couple of toys for sale. Yeah, new new Toys R Us in America is a homunculus. It's a zombie. It's a flesh puppet with a gloved hand rammed up its... Anyway. Uh, oh, that's not... Okay, so now we got... Oh, that's Calibers. I thought for a sec this was part of Brunt, but now it's Calibers. Calibers, this boy does work. This boy is also a target. You put Calibers on the table against certain decks, and it's like, oh, I didn't know you were going to just attack him forever until he went away, but it's kind of nice having a, a threat magnet like that. And Captain Astro Train, I have had a couple deck ideas for this fella, and uh, once again, you know, with us having some time before... Titan Masters Attack uh, launches. That's another deck I want to play with. I love that the new set's also not called Titan's Return. It's called Titan Masters Attack. Because <laughs> it's like, they returned a couple years ago. Now they're just mad. Now they're just like, nah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna come, we're, we're gonna beat you up. Kinetic Converter, Kinetic Intent, double Kinetics, holy crap. And with Astro Train in the pack, this is like a two-pack turbo pack that you'd want to get. All right. Uh... Menace Protective Field, New Orders, Immersed in Shadow, and Conversion Engine. So I got all three Triple Changer cards in the same pack. Granted, this is a lot less exciting on Astro Train. It's kind of useful on Astro Train in the early game, I think. Uh, we were talking about that somewhere else, where it's like, if you know, he's he gets very big when he has three upgrades on him. But if you haven't got three upgrades on him, it can be helpful to flip back here to have the three defense at the end of your turn after he attacks. Leader Astro Train, another figure I have not yet picked up, but he's also an Earth Rise. I feel like zero rush on that one. That one, that toy's not going to go anywhere. I need to. I did not figure out a good <laughs> waste situation. I have way too many wrappers in here. I'm going to go get a plastic bag to stick these plastic wrappers in. I'll be right back. I mean, I'm still basically in the room. I can just keep talking while I'm walking over here, and all the neighbors will just be like, "What's the guy been talking to himself?" You know what? I'm, I'm living my best life. That's what I'm doing. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to the internet. It's pretty much talking to myself. There's no proof necessarily that all this text response is anything but an algorithm just generating stuff based on the words I'm saying. But let's see. What do we miss here? Uh... Oh, yeah. Fort Max card. I want to see what that thing does. I like that it's kind of confirmed he's a double headmaster with the TCG headmaster mechanics. Oh, Rider Skull Man, no need to be mad. I mean, eventually, everyone picks up a toy too early. It's just a thing we all do. And the, the, way, the way to justify it to yourself, just tell yourself a little white lie and just go like, you know what, though? I really like Astro Train, and I was just hyped to get Astro Train, so uh, this is a special case. Rated Shop Shop. This guy's been really fun in limited formats. I still haven't tried him in Constructed, but his his healing power is spooky. And here's like the superstar, the secret superstar of the set, Tailwind. Showing up literally everywhere. This guy is very cool. And we got us, we got the Chop Shop card with Chop Shop. This is a weird box. Eh. Let's throw that wrapper in my little wrapper bag. Hazardous shield, hidden fortification, minor medic kit, increased durability, point position, and shoulder holster. I tried so hard to make this card work with Octone, and it is just too slow for Octone. Uh, even though it's got a Merc right there on the front picture, I just it was too slow for Octone. Um... Daniel, because of you, I'll not say boop every time I deploy Headmaster. I, you know what? That's living. That's that's living the good life. That's living the good life. Um, wave sign. Sometimes picking up a toy too early means buying one that was stolen off a Chinese factory floor by employees. Uh, I've been the one who said Chinese factory floor. That's actually probably not the case anymore. It's like what an Indonesian factory floor, uh, an Indian factory floor. But yeah, that was, that was that was the old life. That was them good old days. At deadlock art. Hell yeah. It's good artwork in this set, and hot damn, good people are working on this artwork. All right. 
Spinister, we already talked about you. I'm not talking, you know what though? You're a pretty cool toy. You're a pretty cool toy. And high jump. I like you because you're four stars. That's actually the main reason why I like him uh, in the off-road patrol deck or with the off-road patrol three wide with a biggie. Uh, he's a four star, so he just fits in. What's going on with this? Look at this. It's a Spinister art card with Spinister again. This is, this is crazy to me. Uh, fight for position, unflinching courage, designated target, battlefield incursion, swerve, four-wheel drive. I needed one more of these, so hooray. Speaking of the off-road patrol. Oh, you're right, wave signs. Vietnam now. Uh, I've been very bad at keeping track of all that. Early 20s, Vangelis would have encyclopedically remembered where all those toys were produced and yelled at people who forgot. Now, I fill my mind with other knowledge, like... Actually, I still haven't quite figured out how to cook fish. I've been doing it a lot, but it's friggin' pin bones, man. Nova Storm, and... Oh, is this? Is this? The top half, I pulled a full six gun from this box. Check it out. It's our boy... Another guy I still need to run in, a, in a, like a proper deck and not just something slammed together. That's cool. I pulled a full six gun. Yeah, there's no six gun art, I don't think. So I can't have that scenario happen again. If I get involuntary promotion, though, then we've got the Nova Storm thing happening. Special delivery, soldier's blaster, medics protective field, immersed in shadow, dual wield. This is a Crux Octone card. And Crude Club. I did need more crude clubs. I like saying crude club. Because you, you, you're you actually just saying crew club. You're like, crew club. You never say the middle bit on here if you say it normally, just in, in conversation. Uh, I have enough six guns to make 18 gun, I think, technically. Technically. Eh. So nice having this plastic bag next to me to throw all the, the waste stuff in. Why didn't I do that before? Ugh, I don't know. Also, a lot of common uncommon dupes in this one. Got Sandstorm again. And fix it. I kind of like this guy because he is Pocket System Reboot. I haven't used him for that yet. And okay, here we go. So far, what I'll say is... I'm kind of okay that this box took a while to get here, because if this is the one I opened in advance and I had that many dupes already, I'd kind of be like, oh man, but I want to practice, I want to play with the new mechanics. Oh, nuts. I'm going to complain about my press copy. Uh, speaking of cooking, have you been watching Hero Meshi's cooking channel? I watched uh, a couple videos. I'm really behind on it, but I'm, I'm happy he's doing a thing and he seems to be happy with it. Uh, I only caught bits and pieces of the thing with the, the agent that basically prevents him from um, working with Toei anytime soon. I think that's a super big bummer. Um, he seems like a nice guy. I don't actually know him, but he seems like a nice guy in those videos. Terrifying Resilience, Kinetic Intensifier Whip, Wedge Formation, Point Position, Even the Score, and Backfire. I think I needed a Backfire. I pulled two packs instead of one. Get back in there. Wait your turn, little mister. I... Well, time to retire. We fixed it. We Oh, what a mess. What a mess. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. Uh, it's private green light. I am hyped to build a green light deck. I saw a very cool green light deck uh, at Three Kingdoms the other week. And green light can be pretty scary, I think. What with this, this character's upgrades can't be scrapped by your opponent's cards. I think that becomes something. And we got Blackjack to go with Hyperdrive from Team Stream. All right. So we got us some showing off, some reprocess, war of attrition, still one of my faves, adaptive plating and energy transfer, and defensive configuration. It took a sec to get out, but it was worth it. The colors and the purple on the yellow and orange for a second had me thinking this was another composite armor, and that card's become valuable. I would like some more of those. You know what card spiked, though, from Wave 2? 
Freaking marksmanship. Go look up how much people are paying for marksmanship right now. I kind of get it, but I feel like that spike, if that spike is happening for the reasons why people like the card, I feel like that should have happened like four months ago. I don't know what suddenly woke people up on marksmanship, but it's a bummer because I want three more. <laughs> Uh, all right, we got Chop Shop again, but we also got us part of a Brunt. We got the top half of Brunt, the uh, Toronto Transit Commission Health Points Oblivio Launcher. I also still need to run Brunt in a proper deck. He feels like someone I want to partner with. Um, oh, there was someone I wanted to partner with him with. Uh, who was it? I think King Starscream. I want to give that a try. Was it King Starscream? It was someone... There was someone for whom I wanted to shut off Bold and Tough, and I forgot who it was. Guarded Posture, Kinetic Intense Fire, Whip Unflinching Courage, New Orders, Blast Suit, and Daring Escape. I'm the Boogeyman, here to ruin the meta. I still like this card. I, uh, I, like the, I like the conversation that's going on about it, because nobody is going like, no, I want my unpleasant Daring Escape deck to exist forever. Uh, everyone's trying to work together on that. And I, I I like the I like the community energy of that. Green light card with the green light pack. I missed that. Crap. Thank you for catching that. That's like, yeah, three for three. Oh, we got our first rare. It's uh it's Private Hot Rod, uh the little boy, uh the young fresh faced private, uh the one with the squishiest cheeks. Just give him a pinch. Uh, I, I played against the Cool Hot Rod deck, uh, also at Three Kingdoms the other week, or the week before. Um, and I, there's there's something to him, too, that I like. I, I just like the extra action per turn when you get to a certain point. Uh, I feel like there's something that you can do with that. And it's it's neat that he's coming with Sea Watch, because Sea Watch is the, you know, flip even more on a white pip. Um, and that's part of burning through your deck to get this extra action every turn effect to get poppin' uh, ASAP. We're going to put the rares. We're going to put the rares over here. It's nice and safe. Uh, watched a bit of it. Oh, talking about zero one. Yeah, I'm digging zero one. I don't disagree with folks who are like, zero one's kind of just peddling right now, doing the same story a couple times in a row. I'm kind of like, he sort of is, but there's also some advancement, and the, the story it's doing is like, admittedly, it's one I really like. I like stories in tokusatsu where they take a, kind of a straightforward... Okay, this is that's kind of putting it mean. What I would call a normal job, a regular job, and then, like, romanticizing it to the point of being as important as, like, running a country or something. I forgot to open the battle card pack for that one. Um... So, like, you know, like, people who, who sell houses, and then they're, like, they figure out how to make the selling of homes into the most beautiful idea in a really cornball way, but I love that stuff. Uh, and we're about to have lawyers, and, like, I haven't watched the this weekend's episode, but I'm, like, there's no way that it isn't just Phoenix Wright, and I'm kind of down for that. Uh, terrifying Resilience, Reprocess, Hidden Fortification, Heroic Resolve, Plunder, and Hijack. But yeah, Zero One's been pretty darn good. I got uh, my buddy Jacob to watch the first three episodes, and you know what's fun to watch? First three episodes of Zero One. That's what's fun to watch. Now we shall open the final pack of the left side of this booster box. And it is, oh, it's the Boogeyman. It's Sergeant Springer, uh, another Sunrunner. Springer, I got this guy in a draft, right? I don't know how to draft still. I like the idea of drafting, and I want to get better at it. I'm still very bad at it. So I had a draft deck that couldn't win, because I forgot to pull anything that was remotely offensive. No weapons, or just a bunch of blue pips and three heroic resolves, because I forgot that I'm keeping most of the star cards in a draft. And so, it is... Anyway, between that and Springer and having a couple copies of Showing Off, uh, I was like flip-flipping him to draw tons of cards, and then eventually flip-flipping him to this mode and doing the Springer thing, I was just gassing out entire games, even though I couldn't win. They just kept going. They just kept going. Anyway, Springer's scary. Uh, I like him, uh, but he's also pretty spooky. And the battle cards for this one are... Terrifying Resilience, Designated Target, Kinetic Intensifier Whip, Erratic Cannon, Energy Transfer, Hit Springer, and another four-wheel drive... 
that four-wheel drive I can add to my trades pile. So, out of the left side, we've only got one rare character so far. It's Private Hot Rod. So we got another side to go. I'm going to take a quick sip. Mmm. Hello, action figure expert. What's up as we're shredding some boosters and chilling out on palindrome day? Welcome once again, everyone, to 02022020. Uh, 0202202010101010101. Access to the 404 not found. Someone else did that joke on Twitter already. It's just stuck in my head. Uh, I can't organize any of this stuff any better. Maybe I can put the small ones there and the triples there, and then we got our normal character cards. And we can we can give these their own little platform here. Five for five. Yeah, I'm, this is a weird. This is one of those boxes where you're like, did y'all preload this for if I was opening this a week before the release? But like, they don't. It's just confirmation bias. Uh, another sip of this. But yeah, I'd like to do some more videos of 3A stuff. Or World War Robot stuff, I mean, specifically. Uh. So I have, I, I really want to talk about the Armstrongs and the Large Martins, I love those. I so want to talk about the Caesars. The Caesars apparently have become friggin', they've ghosted off the internet, and that's such a shame, because they're very good. I think they're the best World War Robot portable figures. Anyway, let's get onto side B of this booster box. Let's see what it holds. Top card. By the way, over at Three Kingdoms, there was a new booster box opened up, just chilling out, and I was like, It'd be real funny if I went over there and just bought, like, two boosters and got a super rare. And my friend Eric went over there, bought six boosters, but one of the top two was Galaxy... Galaxy? <laughs> was Galaxy Prime. It was one of the two super rares I'm looking for. Minor Salt. Good for him, though. <laughs> Captain Impactor. Uh, and another half of a six-gun. We got three... Whoop, dropped him. Three pieces of six-gun. That's... Well, one and a half six guns, that's nine guns so far. Captain Impactor, one of the, the, the stars, but also kind of the disposable meat shield of uh, one, you know, the current popular Orange Tanks deck, which I'm really happy exists. Like, just a reinvented version of tanks that totally works, uh, built on the back of kind of him and Demolisher, and kind of even more so composite armor on Demolisher. Uh, Head-on collision, medics protective field, hazardous shield, swerve, new orders, and... Hey, speaking of which, holy crap, is this six, this is six for six? This is six for six. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Looking on Facebook, excited to see what the new Optimus does along with Mind Wipe and Weird Wolf. Yeah, uh... Time Masters, I, I am. We podcasted with Drew Nolosco during like wave one, and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if the. T <laughs> if you guys had a Headmasters where the heads were a little card, and then the artwork for the body was a full body? And he gave one of those replies where I was like, I don't know if you're just playing with me or not. The moment I saw that preview, I was like, I'm Nostradamus. That Optimus, going by the, the booster box uh, artwork, that looks like it's the um, the Power Master Prime body, so that's probably going to be who the character card is, I would assume. Private Smokescreen. I have done nothing with you so far in the game. And Sidetrack. Okie dokie. Uh, Puffing that plastic like a Resistant ligament filled with air. War of attrition, terrifying resilience, designated target, another dual wield, good stuff, adaptive plating, and relentless invasion high. I don't have six of this yet. I like to have six copies of every card because it's double play sets. I would never use six of this, but I did need another couple of these, so hey. It's not a waste. Kind of is. Ha. I leaned back to open that wrapper. Uh, oh, hello, Skytread Tank. I wonder if we'll get Skytread Plane. I love to call uh, the two Skytread pieces by name as though they were separate characters. 
Um, it gives me a little chuckle. It brightens the corner of the horizon of the dusk of my day. So, did Zelda have an advantage since he was a lawyer? Cygnus, that's the, uh... Oh, are you guys... Wait, are you guys talking about the decade Ryuki arc? <laughs> it's about to go like, you know, the, the decade in the Ryuki arc that everyone was a lawyer and they... Uh, hidden Fortification, Kinetic Converter, Reprocess, Even the Score, Immersed in Shadow, and another Hijack. I think I'm good on Hijacks, too. What am I going to do with all these Hijacks? I'm going to collect some cars that I don't own. That's what I'm going to do. Theft. Grand Theft. Of the auto kind. Hey, get in the bag. I said get in the bag. Get in the bag! Anyway... What card do we get? Sergeant Thundercracker, that's another rare. I've, I've already got him, but I have not done anything with him yet. I forgot about his bot mode art. I like that art. Uh, so that's two rares. So we're probably... Usual odds Usual odds on a box where you get three rares. Uh, sometimes you get four rares, and then sometimes one of those three or four rares is a super rare. Um... Yeah, well, the thing with Trypticon, right, is uh, the deck I, I was trying out with him, you basically have one of these in the deck and then two of these in the sideboard, and you're using Coup and, uh, was it Coup and, and Valuable Contract? You're basically trying to use a bounty addition to pull more one-star cards into your hand, and the first ones you want to pull in are more Relentless Invasions. Uh, the bummer about Trypticon right now is he is a ridiculously slow and unreliable deck, and I tried really hard, and boy, it was just annoying to run Trypticon. Needler, though, is a good boy. Prevents that healing. But, yeah, Trypticon needs some more parts right now. I just... When Trypticon happens, it's cool. Trypticon happens, like, one in three times. Maybe one in four times if, if I were to play him a whole lot more. And it, it was... And also, it wasn't like... The kind of deck that loses a bunch but is kind of goofy fun and doing dumb stuff like like the Omnibots sometimes are. Trypticon is just kind of like, well, do I, did I pull the card yet? Did I pull the one card yet? <laughs> nope, not yet. Oh, uh, Showing off, Unflinching Courage, Crowbar, Blast Suit, Sturdy Javelin. Uncommon of the set. Another Crude Club! Hooray! Uh, I want to triple these up on Predaking sometime. I know other people have done it already, but I want to taste the magic. All right. The adventure continues. Ape face uh, and Vanguard, uh, Euro along with Needler. Hey, I pulled the two the two Euro G ones in a row. Uh, go me. Ape face. I've also not yet done anything with. Uh, I did just get the toy secured. Uh, I know that it's not very good, I, I, but I want it for cheap, and thanks to a, a friend of mine, uh, Ryan Hoopla, I got a hookup on one for super to duper cheap, which is precisely how I like it, so uh, I'm down for that. Uh, stay back there. Okay, pop you open. The problem with my plastic waste bag is that it's small, and so... If I don't lean down to hand place these little trash babies in the nest, they just start crawling out. Sounded better in my head. It actually sounded really cruel, what I'm doing. Hidden Fortification, Unflinching Courage, Crowbar, Contract Contingency, Sturdy Javelin again, and Jam Signals. I, I still like this, but currently it is kind of a, it is kind of a not all that great uh, thing. It doesn't really stop enough. Let's put this focus. Hey, why can't I tap you? Awaken. There we go. Where are we going? Here we go. Ha! <sighs> In the nest. Oh, hi. There's a super rare. It is the hey Octone, my friend. 
This is the guy I ran at the Energon Invitational. I'm just gonna lay you down <clears throat> over here. So that's uh, that's a super rare in this box. That's three rare slots. Probably all we're gonna see rares wise. Raider Rumble. Still a chance of a fourth one uh, in the the packs we have remaining. Yeah, I also think I am lagged behind a bunch of y'all. So my apologies if I seem to be reacting uh, out of synchronization uh, with what we're all saying. Designated target, War of Attrition, Hazardous Shield, Even the Score, Blast Suit, and Step Forward! Which I've only used with Omega Supreme so far. All right. <laughs> In a dream world, I'd love to have two Octones so I could just fold one like a monster. But I should probably see if I can trade him somewhere for a Galactic Optimus Prime. Hey, it's the first Omega Supreme part. Usually I see like two of these in every like box I have opened or a friend has opened so far. Uh, so it's Omega Supreme tank. That's a fourth rare. Although, given how I always see two, at least two of these in a box, I'm always curious if these are actually rare or like somewhere between uncommon and rare. Anyway, I'm going to use you to uh, cover the top of Octone. Like, that's okay. It's four rare slots and high jump. Do we know, Daniel, do we know if Octone was actually short printed or was that just a case in like one region? Because like, I know there was the region that seemed to have trouble finding him in literal cases, but then like, didn't someone like have a case full of Oct... I, there was a whole thing where like, it seemed to balance out in some of the reporting I saw. Uh, but that was also like a month or two ago, so I'm, I'm probably not remembering correctly. Terrifying Resilience, Kinetic Converter, Guarded Posture, Indestructible Sword, Sabotage Armaments, and a Toolbox. I pulled this a lot, but I keep forgetting how many I've pulled. It's not annoying me the way Opportune Repairs has been annoying me <laughs> with its constant appearances in my blind packs of trading cards. TCs, if you will. Private green light. There you are. Hey, we finished a we finished a brunt. Okay, so this box had a full brunt and a full six gun. That's not very common in my highly biased experiences of talking to about ten people. So that's kind of cool. And we got green light. Nothing wrong with green light. Huh, showing off. Stable cover, Soldier's Blaster, Battlefield Incursion, Erratic Cannon, and Multi-Missile Pod! Still need to do something cool with this card. I've tried, and it always ended up being the first thing I trimmed out of a deck because it was, like, always in decks that were, like, trying to do something else, and this just got in the way. So I need to figure out a deck that mainlines this. Obviously, something with, like, Trigger Happy, just fetching weapons out of scrap, is going to mainline this, but... I just gotta do I just gotta do it. That's what I gotta do. Alright, kid. Lockdown. We're we're pulling I think we've pulled all the mer No, we still haven't pulled we didn't pull Detritus in this box. Okay. But lockdown. This is a deck I want to build, and Saul at Three Kingdoms has built this, and it's like and at Energon Invitational, I heard there was a spooky lockdown deck who was using this and contract contingency to just pile cards under lockdown and by like turn f like whatever this guy had like three cards under him way faster than you, you think he would and oh I want to do some of that nonsense hey Sunrunner boop Let's see what you got. War of Attrition, Stable Cover, Head-On Collision, Acute Reflexes, Contract Contingency, speaking of, and Step Forward. I was hoping that we'd continue the pattern and that would be Opportune Offensive because I, I want another Opportune Offensive. 
Sound Blaster's also sold out. They got a Sound Blaster over at uh, at Harry Tarantula. I bought a Sound Blaster when I was in Victoria over at uh, Triple Play because I, I wanted one and I was tired of not pulling one. Uh, thankfully, the one, like, the one I really... I wanted him actually more than Galactic Prime or Lord Megatron because those cards ain't bad. I mean, those cards are good. I just, I'm not as excited to run those decks because so many people, like, people are all over Galactic Prime now. Lord Megatron kind of found a place in uh, in orange tanks, and uh, I'd like to have those cards, obviously, but Sound Blaster was the one that had more things tied directly to decks I wanted to do. Granted, it's just being the sideboard card in the Octone deck, but uh, I picked one up when I was out there. Oh, and speaking of orange tanks, it's Impactor again, and Power, this is this the Bold Squad. The Bod Squad. Big, beefy, bot men that are bold and flip lots of orange. Alright, we got Showing Off, Stable Cover, Reprocess, Heroic Resolve, Dual Wield, and Toolbox again. Hi, buddy. I'm digging that we pulled, I think, another place out of Dual Wield. I like Dual Wield a lot. I like Mercs a lot, so I like Dual Wield a lot. Okie dokie. Oh, God, not a... Oh, well... If y'all could just look into the light for a second. Alright. Hey everyone, welcome back to the stream. Woo! Technical difficulties there for a second. Good thing I opened this booster pack flawlessly. Flawlessly! To reveal Raider Kickback. And hey, finally to go with our green lights, we got Dazzle Strike. Who is not terribly exciting, I gotta admit. I have not done anything with Dazzle Strike yet. I don't I don't know what I want to do with Dazzle Strike. That's a ball tan too, that's what we got there. We got us uh A We also got us unflinching courage and special delivery and target and swerve and increased durability and coop! Uh, there was a period where I could not pull this card for the life of me. Now I'm finally starting to see Koo again, and I'm happy about that. Uh, I think Koo is, is something in a mercenary deck that I want to... I want to try some kind of kooky mercenary combo thing. Octone, I use his bounty ability a lot, but it, it ain't really as a combo thing. It's just more as, like, killing you fast. This is, uh, the third to last booster pack, by the way. And it contains... Omega Supreme Base, yes, this is four rares and a super rare, but also two of the rares, and the, again, two Omega Supreme parts, at least. Uh, I know some folks have said they pulled, like, full Omega Supremes out of boxes, that's completely feasible, but I, I question whether or not this guy truly occupies a, a proper rare slot, or if it's some kind of, something between uncommon and rare, but then the, does that collation even make any sense? Then again, because he is a triplicate, does it... Well, no, it's just one sheet. It's just one sheet. It's uh, Is he on the rare sheet, though? Do we know the for sure? I don't know. Who am I talking to right now? Myself. Raider Rumble. We saw you already. Anyway, what's in this pack? War of Attrition, Soldier's Blaster, and Head-On Collision. Also, Plunder and Indestructible Shield, and another Lucky Vest. That's a pack of cards. Seven of them. All right, penultimate pack. What do you got? Show me what you got. Sergeant Springer. I saw the sideways card already, so I cheated a bit. Sergeant Springer. That's our second Sergeant Springer. And then we got us another uh, hyperdrive. Uh, pop this. Open. It's guarded posture, it's kinetic converter, it's hazardous shield, it's decipher. Erratic cannon takes us to pocket processor. That was good. I was gonna try to make a wrap out of all that, and it just didn't happen. Oh well. What's in the final pack? What's in the final pack? Yes. Yes, Rumble is red. Yes. That's what good, honest, hardworking people say. People who belong in the city of Rapture. That's, uh, Baltan, you did, oh, you, know, you did miss the Hecatomb funnage. I opened ten packs. It's at the start of the stream. It's over here. It's a lot of Hecatomb. No gods, but a lot of relics. Which I was missing a bunch of from set one. Oh, 
Also, I responded the moment I saw you say that, so use that to figure out what the time lag is. <laughs> hey, Graham! At the very end! At the very end! Your boy, Sergeant Mirage, showed up at the very end of the pack. Or the very last pack of the, the very end of the shredding. The very good actual race car, Sergeant Mirage, showed up. Ah, uh, that's a good coda. That's a good coda. By which I mean a good bookend. And hey, so we got a full brunt. We got a full six gun. And we got a full six gun. Holy crap. So out of this box, we got a six gun and we got a six gun and we got a brunt. That's actual magic. Congratulations, box. And then, uh, what are our final cards? Uh, maybe an opportune offensive? Do I get to pull another opportune offensive, maybe? Just the, the one would be... Would pull another. Hidden Fortification, Crowbar, Minor Medic Kit, Sturdy Javelin, Sabotage Armaments, and Valuable Contract, which I did need another one of to fill out my play sets. Well, that's a... That's a box. That box had drama. That box had... Had multiple dramas. So what was it? Five packs in a row, a character would be pulled, and then a, char a battle card with that character on it would be pulled. In this box, we also got one full brunt and two full six guns with no dupes, no spares, no halves. We got a 12 gun and a brunt perfectly. Graham at the very start is piping up, saying, I hope you pull nothing but mirages. The very end, one mirage shows up. And then we, we pulled five rares. Well, four rares and a super rare. That was the journey. So the super rares were uh, two-thirds Omega Supreme, as always. And just, just another Octone. Uh, Thundercracker and Hot Rod. What drama. And then, of course, we also... Uh, we got the trip to boys. Uh, I think I might laminate this one because I laminated a Metroplex. And uh, I, I like... The, so basically, I always have, with these Titan setups, I have one in my binder to keep nice, one in, in top loaders to play with, and, and now with the Titans, I got one that's laminated because I'm a, a monster. Let's take you out of here. Ah, yes, Graham. I mean, this happened because this this was kind of your doing, really. It's uh, laying down in the seeds you sowed. The bed you planted in this field of dreams. That's, that's what happened. Shouldn't, shouldn't you laminate things you actually going to play? Yeah, well, you know, okay, you know, I, you're correct, but sometimes you, you laminate stuff for, to prove you can. <laughs> and maybe in wave five, I'll play Trypticon again. Uh, take it easy, uh, Linus. Uh, have a good snooze. Uh, I'm just going to organize these stacks. These hot, fat stacks. Oh, I forgot. We So we did have the one unfinished story of Skytread. Uh, Luke Johnson, don't worry, the stream is not over quite yet. I still tend to yammer for a million years after we finish the thing that we set out to do. I also got some uh, some toys I got months ago that I haven't opened yet, and I wanted to open them, and I figured I might do that after I open some cards, because we're already here, right? So we'll put you all on there. Yeah. We'll put this here and this on top so we know what's what. And I got some weaponizers to give to hypothetical newbies. That's a booster box, yes.
You got all these index cards. These one-sided index cards, because now they're getting smart putting all their advertisements all over it. Curses. A happy little bag of recycling, all ready to go. What's this game called? It's called the Transformers Trading Card Game. It's based on a franchise of robots in disguise. See, I had a couple tasks I wanted to do, and I figured that I might hang out a bit on the stream afterwards whilst I do them. So, I still haven't opened these. I filmed the boxes because I need the B-roll. I'm, I'm a weirdo. I film boxes for B-roll, and then I don't open things until I can film the boxes. But I haven't popped open these animation-style uh, Siege guys yet. And I don't need these boxes anymore because I filmed them, so I figured I'd just cut the tape and then massacre these. Whoops, we're all here. Yeah. There are the instructions maybe cell shaded to nope, it's still just crap. Okay. Are they different at all? Do they say anything? Oh, they do have the uh the S code on them, I think. I think that's new. Ugh. Boy. Like here, let me illustrate one of my problems really clearly. It's a giant picture that's then shrunken that's focused on this little spot down here where the red makes all the details so invisible it's hard to immediately tell what on earth is even happening. Anyway. Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe this was on the original instruction sheet. I just can't remember anymore. Oh yeah, Silver League. A buddy of mine just caught me a cheap ape, ape face. I'm going to pick up from him on Wednesday. $20 ape face. $20 Canadian dollar ape face. Uh, Daniel says, my friend updated his jazz deck. He ran at the EI, so we'll try to upload the profile when he comes up in a week or two. Yeah, do it. All right. So, a smart person would go to get their their uh, god hand nippers to, to clip through these things. I don't like to use, like, a knife to try to slice them upwards, because I'm always like, what if I gouge the figure? So instead, I'm like, what if I just pull until they come out and usually ah this doesn't okay so like one in three times that happens where i pull it out and then the little thing here snaps back rubber band style and bites me on the hand uh so i had it coming uh, i knew it was gonna happen oh but it's a fun gamble though it's like the shock game where you hope that you pass the handle around and you try to figure out if you're the one who's gonna get electric shocked Cell shaded axe. Well, that that silver ain't cell shaded. I'll tell you that much. Huh, huh, huh. Easy critique uh, to launch. Uh, I'll just turn this into a shield. All right. Oh, thank goodness. There's no twisty on the gun. Oh, neat. I didn't know the gun was cell quote unquote cell shaded. That's cool. Also, my god hands are in another room, and my nail clippers are in another room, and my scissors are in another room. None of them are here. So, <laughs> we do this ah, in-store shoplifting style. Mm. Ah, there we go. Oh, I'm not going to get a grip on those last two. Okay, risk-taking time. Can we do it from back here? Can I just... I'm here for all the folks who get anxiety watching people cut things unsafely on YouTube. I'm just going to cut a hole for that to go through. Trust me, I get that anxiety too when I watch people fumble with knives on uh, YouTube videos. Okay, so this... Ugh. 
Put all this back in here for the recycling later on. Who keeps boxes? Not this cat. Man, what's up with the bloom on this thing? It was not blooming this hard before. I'm going to turn this down. Oh, now it's just auto blooming. It now it's just getting worse. Look, Optimus is glowing. Ah. Sigma Seven says, "Funny enough, back in the day when I was a youngin, I used TM2 Dinobots claws to cut box tape." Relatable. Um, Ariok, Ariok, Blood and Souls for Lord Ariok, of course. Uh, thoughts on Earthrise, Scorponok, and Skylinx? They look neat. Uh, you know, Skylinx. I think uh, it's it's actually right on on uh, it's on brand for him to have a, a base mode. I think that makes a lot of narrative sense for the Lynx to turn into a little base. Oh, there we go. Um, I you know, there's no way he's going to be as cool as Combiner Wars Skylinx because turning into a torso is is uh, inherently better than anything that the new one's going to do. But I think the new one does look very cool. Uh, also, I'm, I'm massively biased in favor of things that turn into torsos. These colors are cool. Holy moly. I'm going to turn him into a truck. I'm going to get right on this. You can't stop me. I'm here to play with toys. Look at all that. Look at that. Look at that. Holy. Holy crow. Jeezum Cricket. All right, Siege Prime always has a specific order of operations that I consistently get wrong. So that's the lifestyle Isley. This is the annoying part. You kind of have to half open these things, but not full open them. Or was it? Don't open them, then open. Anyway, I figured it out. I got it. Not even looking at the chat for gameplay help. This no, I'm a professional gamer. I do these streams because this is this is I'm a professional. I can get a wheel out. Can you get a wheel out? Didn't think so. Jump. Uh, green horn. Huh? <laughs> Kozo. <laughs> Boy, uh. <laughs> I've been playing with toys my whole life. You look like a <laughs> fourth rate pl pl player with a tenth rate pair of hands. Yeah, I did it. I said the thing. All right. Last time I did this, I got the arms in first. All right. Are we here and present to just watch paint flick off this thing as I go? Let's find out. No, no, we got this. We got this. I can even look at the chat while I'm doing this. Who is JoJo? I don't know. Return to video games. Hell yeah. Get the wheel out the exact right angle. You can clip right through the completed vehicle mode. Pro stat. As for the speed run. Hey, Wookie Mart. I finished opening cards, but now I'm opening some toys. It's basically like card. Cards are toys. Cards are toys on Amazon. It is toys in the games that they are listed under. Don't at me. Oh yeah, we doing it. We doing it. Oh, here's the cool bit. Let's get you in here. Ah, uh, yeah. Just bite together. Yeah, it's just smush together this vehicle mode. Look at that handsome lad. Look at that truck. 
Cards are toys, but are toys cards? Oh, man. I know the answer. Because I am at one with myself. But I'm going to leave it to all of you to figure out the answer. Look at, look at this. Look at this. We're going to mount some optimi. Some optimi. I love that he's just bold-facedly like, no, nah, no, nah, they're headlights. They're headlights. That's all they are. Uh, what's up, the pink line? That's a uh, cell highlighting. I will say there should have been some up here, given how there is full coverage. S so many other spots, it really is noticeable there's none up there. Uh, the reds are not identical to the naked eye. I don't know how it's picking up on the stream, but this, the Siege one, is slightly more pale. Slightly more salmon. All right, well, let's put your uh, let's put your friends on you here, and then we'll we'll set you aside. Oh. Oh. Didn't have that thing all the way out. Oh, now the tabs are coming loose. Oh, oh no, the thighs are swiveled. That's why. Oh, you buttocks of a thigh. All right, we did it. Let's bop you down there, and then. Uh, feel like I had found a way to put this here and now I can't remember. Oh! I know what I did. Right. I put the gun on. And then I put this on. Yeah, there we go. Now he's got his trailer. <laughs> ah! Optimus Prime with his iconic trailer. Just as I remember it from my childhood. Uh, cell shade is something that uh, one does often to 3D uh, animated objects that tries to make them look like they were uh, like painted on a, an animation cell. It's not as common anymore, uh, I think, as it used to be. I am from a horror game. Who am I? Anyway. Oh yeah, there's always this... I always miss the diagonal tape. Ugh. Okay. Spoiler alert. I think Siege Optimus is ten times better than Siege Megatron. But, I would like to be pleasantly surprised by this Megatron. Uh, oh man. <laughs> Just gonna do the thing. Poke some holes, make them bigger. Uh, they cell shaded the top of the sword a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That looks that looks kinda cool. Yeah, this one doesn't seem to be oh there's like tension on there even. Oh we'll see in a second. Uh, if you cut a finger off live, who should we call? Um obviously the Ghostbusters. Get yes, there we go. All right, found a new pro strat to get these things off, and you don't have scissors. Cut the hole bigger, and then they'll just fall through effort. Honestly, oh, 
feel like I could. No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> I am an adult. <laughs> yeah. I'm allowed to play with knives. Because <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> Y'all think I'm doing this for the stream. This is how I entertain myself when I'm on my own. Oh, okay, there we go. Cut the head off the snake. Should free him up. There we go. <laughs> Tool assistant run. I get it. Vangelis has a knife out. Boy, what a way to join a stream. It's true. <laughs> Just catching more of this. The unbox percent. <laughs> yeah, the other speed run on the toy is where you, you buy it, you take it out of the bag, put it on the desk, you're like, all right, three, two, one, and you just throw the box in the garbage, you're like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> That's the any percent. Uh, okay. Uh, how do these ankle tilts feel? Still kind of flimsy. I don't like those ankle tilts where it's just like the part unsnapped. <laughs> like I don't, I don't like how that feels at all. Um, but yeah, oh man. It's like there's actual friction up here keeping the plate up. Like now you have to push down and pull up. That's so cool. Because, I mean, you all know Siege Megatron. You all know the, the little floppy stump head man. Like, this is this is a physically better toy. How nice. Feels like one of his legs is longer than the other one, but that might just be confirmation bias. Or the heels sticking down. There we go. Okay, let's stick his cannon on, see how G1s he looks. That's tight. They overreacted a bit. This guy is hella tight, except for those ankles. Yeah, I dig it. This sword's still kind of dumb, but I dig it. I wish he came with a cel-shaded version of the thing that Siege Soundwave came with, because that, that does kind of fix this up really well, I think. Uh, all right, let's go through the transfer. I just figured out how to transform this guy smoothly for cameras. Uh, well, in multiple shots, but for camera earlier today. So what did I do? I turned this. Siege Megatron feels like a toy where everyone's got their own order of operations and someone watching this is probably going to go like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. All right, get that head down in there. Oh, these things actually stay up. On mine, this one just gravity flops it right down. Graham, that is too early for what the hell are you doing. That doesn't count. That is a premature what the hell are you doing. Premature. <laughs> oh, baby. Mm -mm. Those were, Those were heavy. Those were hat. Let's get this up, up, up. Down in it. And then this thing I always forget to do. Weird compression. These in the tab thingamies. This guy is so much stiffer than Siege Megatron. It's ridiculous. Might just be that he has paint all over him. I don't know. But man, man, that felt way better. That felt so much better. What I miss? Oh, in general. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Turn them wasties. Let's 
finish the turret. I spoke too soon, they already fell down. But no, I could feel a little snap when they went back up. So they still can get bumped down, I guess. Oh, well, this thing holds them up once it goes in. All right. Oh my God, that's tight. Ugh. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> we'll do that curl. This thing feels way the hell better. <laughs> Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, and curl you up. Transformation cops are here. They can't stop me, it's too late. I made me a tank. That looks cool. That was also way nicer to mess with, physically, on a tactile level, the thing that I find very important. How you looking with your, your buddy, your pal? Beep, beep, I'm a tank. Kind of wish those little headlights were, were happening up there. The color layout on, on this normal Siege one is, I think, better. This one looks weird and kind of naked, but feels so much better. Is that what the Combat Hero one feels like? Because maybe I will track that one down if it feels that good. Ah, anyway. We did it. Oh my god, I'm on fire! You are going to get reviews of those. It's going to be one video, mostly about... It was going to mostly just be about the color differences, but now it's also going to be about how much friggin' better that Megatron feels. But yeah, like, the, the, the bummer is that this... Okay, the Common Hero does not, but it's not too terrible. Damn, yeah, this feels excellent. And this, this definitely is kind of begging for some more color. Uh, it's just, yeah, it looks kind of naked, and it's weird that this is not the same color as this. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's fine. If we play pretend it's the 80s, I'm like, yeah, it's an 80s tank, sure. Um. Uh, gonna put these over here. You guys just go chill out over here for a sec. Eyebrows are going to be looking right at all of y'all. And the one other thing I wanted to do on the stream... Where is it? The Soto I wanted to stick her up. Where did I put it? I'm just curious how the experience of stickering a Soto goes on a stream. Yeah, do one of these platform bodies. Where'd the knife go? Wait, 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 wait. Where'd the knife go? <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> yes, we should all feel safe. Uh. 
I was curious for any of you who might be watching who have messed with Soto, is this a revelation to you? I always wonder if there are folks who like are like, man, if only there were better instructions, and you're like, wait, there's instructions on the inside of the box? You figure the image of a knife would be sharper. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. Oh my. Hey, let me make y'all squeamish. Once I was really tired and I did this where I sliced the top, except it caught, it slipped, and then it bapped the fingertip on my middle finger. It wasn't a deep cut, but boy howdy was that a way to wake up. Don't play with knives when you're tired when you're tired. Don't play with knives. Period. Don't play with knives when you're tired. Either. All right. Perforated edges are no match for us adults. Heh. <laughs> That's right. I, an adult, can handle a perforated edge. It's no match for my fighting strength. Heh. <laughs> okay, I don't want to do this. This is my Soto tool. I guess I'll do the belt first. I always like doing the belt sticker first because then it's one less piece of busy work. The sixes are on the front. Okay. I love modern soda though. I just push my thumb flesh in and that like sucks the adhesive to the sculpt and I just give it a little, you know, lovely tap with this. It's a little friendly tap so I don't poke the uh the ink, and rip the paper. Oh yeah. And I think it just ends up looking like a paint app. Double checking the instructions. You do want this little black. This this. Where's my finger? This. You see how there's like a black vertical thing on the right, and it was on the left on the other side. You want that where the driver is, according to the instructions. I believe I saw what Bugman is this. This is Common Rider Deno from 2007, but this Soto figure came out just a few months ago. This is from Soto Deno Series 1. Modern Soto stickers are like borderline vinyl heat-activated things where you just use your thumb flesh, press on it with that natural body heat, and it just adheres to the sculpt, forms itself around the sculpt. It's so, like that. I just think that looks like a paint app. It's so nice. Consensual sticker prodding, I respect it, says Keenan Thompson. Good, good, good. Always consensually prod your stickers. Have you ever seen the Deno Workout DVD? Squatto, I believe I did way back. Way back when Deno was new. That sounds familiar, but I might be mixing it up with another Hyper Battle DVD. No, these things are not cut super well this time. There we go. The one bummer about Soto, especially like Soto Chronicle or like web exclusives, Chronicle less so, but it's like if you rip the stickers, well, go buy a new one. It's part of why me, uh, I mean a bunch of other people are doing it, but it's why I'm joining in the, the crowd with the new Team Rider initiative over at, uh, at Bandai. Uh, a bunch of us are like, hey, bring over Soto. Because you know what I'd love? Domestic Soto, where I could just email Bluefin for, like, replacement sticker sheets. And, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, this is the base Deno body. So it's for all the, all the, the initial four forms.
Want to know what sets off my unimportant anxiety feelings? Well, uh, there's a couple Japanese YouTubers who will show, they'll film themselves putting these stickers on. Or, like, Soto Team on the Candy Blog will, like, have prototypes with stickers put on, and it's like, I, they just slap the sticker on there. It's not even straight. It drives me insane. Because these stickers are so good at adhering to all this stuff. Like, ah, oh, I don't know why you would just go, all right, I'm done. All right, let's do that driver. Let's do that that belt plate. Yeah. Ideally, this will be a tour de force, as the drivers tend to be nowadays. I'm adhering to everything. It's already happening, yeah. Oh, I love it when this happens. Like the blue arrow, there's a sculpted one underneath and it lines up perfectly. Oh man, yeah, just look at that. That is one sticker over one sculpted surface. But hot damn. I don't know, I think that's amazing. Else are we putting stuff? There is one for the pass hand, I believe. Yeah. And then the frame is just in the right position to make it awkward to try to use the frame as a better, more stabilized holding system. So thanks for that, Mega House. That's who produces these. Uh, last I read is uh, specifically it's like Bandai the company making these, but the physical production is done at a mega house factory. How close can this get? Oh, yeah. Join me for the process. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, get all in that sculpted detail, yeah, you little... Mm, mm, yeah, do it! Yeah! <laughs> I'm an adult! <laughs> yeah! Alright. Excellent. Fishformers, yeah, we did. A, we actually did a lot of Transformers. Uh, this is kind of my, um, my last little thing I wanted to do. Uh, specifically was put some stickers on a Soto and see what that looks like on a stream. Uh, I was just curious. So. Seal number eight is on that inner arm. Uh, okay, same seal on both. How are we going to do this? It's implying this is on the inside, but the sticker looks like it goes on the outside. No, no, it is on the inside. Okay. Okay. Seems like a lot of room. That's weird.
You can't tell, but I'm like frowning and making weird little lip motions because I'm like, this is. This doesn't feel good, but I'm. It's working. I just don't like putting stickers up underneath parts where joints are also moving around. There's other sodas that have done that. I'm just never comfortable with it. I feel like the margin of error is way too tight. Okay. Don't understand why it's crawling up in there so hard, but... Less. No, okay, yeah, silver's on the outs. Oh, wait, yeah, okay. I see what happened. That bicep was backwards. So that was in the wrong spot. Thank goodness you get four of these. Oh, I'm going to try to do some repair. That happens sometimes. These come in and then like a piece is swiveled around. It's the first one I'm messing with and I just don't notice that I'm putting a thing in the wrong spot till it's way too late. So case in point. Would you believe I have salvaged even worse looking stickers from this scenario? Because I have. So this is the stage show suit, uh, known for the damage to the silver uh, on the inner bicep. Uh, this is actually a deep cut reference for the true fans. I guess just to make it clear, I have not looked at the chat in a while because I've been kind of hawk-eyed trying to get this thing out of its mistaken position. All right, there we go. Simple as pie. Yeah, we'll just... Reapply you. And hey, now we know next for next time. When it feels wrong, it is. Oh, poor guy. Poor champ. It's all right. I have seen some of these floating around in Mandarake for like 800 yen for the body and an armor. So I'll probably just grab another one and then I'll do the thing I never really do, but I'll tell myself I'll do it. I'll say like, oh, this will be the one I paint the silver on. Uh, actually, actually, you want to see my other trick? Hang on, I'll be right back. I got one more trick. Let me check the chat. Oh, y'all are like blood, blood, blood. Holy moly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do my, my one other little fix. i got to go get something from the other room. So I will truly be away from the uh, chat for a sec here. So... What are stickers? They are, at the end of the day, a form of paper. So what looks worse, what looks the worst on a sticker? When you can see the white of the paper. So, if you're gonna make the best of a bad situation, you take those bits that are white, take a pen, ink them in black, and to the naked eye at a distance, it still looks all banged up. Nowhere near as bad as if there was just big old exposed white paper, though. And there you go, Battle Damage Deno. It's custom. Be selling this for $85 on eBay. Oh, well, yeah, you know, for you guys, it'll 
contact me privately, it'll be $75. Because <laughs> I'm such a hot pro customizer. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm an adult. <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at this. I know what I'm doing. And I know what I've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an adult. Hey, I fixed it for now. Make it 90 and you got a deal. 78. <laughs> Everyone's up bidding. <laughs> Is that permanent marker? No, it's just a pen. But it's a pen with like a, not a ballpoint pen. It's like a gel pen. So the ink flows out more. Digital fanboy. Hey there, Evangelist. Shout out. Oh crap, I did. Ninety-one thirty. All right, I'll make it up to you all. I'm gonna do the other bicep sticker, but correctly. Oh, look! There's uh, there's um there's a line and a piece of detail that this perfectly flows around. Why would anyone put this on the wrong side? That's just ridiculous. What kind of fool? <laughs> Good thing I never did that. Yeah, can hardly tell. <laughs> Rider Skull Man, uh, I opened a super rare. Wasn't one of the ones I was looking for, but I'm happy with it. Uh, gel pen, I might be wrong. It's just, it's not a ballpoint is the main thing. It's like the ink kind of flows off like this as opposed to a ballpark where you have to push it in so i find that it kind of it kind of um feeds ink onto paper a little more smoothly gel pen rollerball pen uh just whatever a non-ballpoint pen is okay so we got the eyes and the rails and they are fully separate okay I'll do the yellow things first. Number two is on the right side. How nice. Uh, the tool I'm using is a spudger. Same thing I use to like wedge stuff apart on toys. Um, the flat end of the spudger I find is perfect for handling stickers. Pointy end I used to use a lot more for chiseling in details, but it's so pointy it tended to punch through the stickers, so I tried to stop and just use the flat end or corners of it where possible. It's a little bit less punctury, I guess is the way I would put it. Don't mind my silence. I just find this actually incredibly uh, meditative. It's a little more... It's hard to say why. It's going to sound weird. I find this a little more relaxing to do here than over at my, like, computer desk. I guess over there I'm, like, kind of hunched over and I'm, like, I'm just, I have stuff playing. But here, like, just doing it, like, with the fan going, 
the little audience on the live stream somehow is more relaxing. It's weird. Uh, number three, right? Yeah. All right. I like to imagine golf claps every time you finish a sticker. <laughs> Uh, what's this? Uh, someone gave out a bunch of convention, half a dozen reviewers use identical ones. Yeah, Luke Johnson, that was diecast. He get, he's actually where I got the blue one from. I have a black one as well, but the blue one uh, has a different rigidity that I like more for stickers. Um, what's the figure called? This is Soto Common Rider Deno. Uh, Soto is a uh, candy toy series. I think it is the best candy toy series they're doing right now. If you're wondering what the sirens are, it's just Sunday night and it snowed. So probably people smacking their cars into each other. Coupled with, I'm near an off-ramp. So those are also most likely ambulances, in my experience. That's what they tend to be. Uh, going to the various apartment buildings in the area. And uh, ideally, not having to carry anyone away. Uh, also, not only am I near an off-ramp, a lot of ambulances use, but local fire station is like other side of the uh, like other side of the street. It's a parallel street from here, so that's also just whenever a fire alarm in the area goes off and that fire engine leaves. That's what I hear. Look at that! Like that looks like a paint app. Ugh. Mm. Yeah. Ugh. Like yeah. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. Have I messed with uh, Super Mini Plus sets? I have a couple, but I haven't built them yet. Um, so I still got to do that. Uh, oh, Baltan 2, the equivalent Ultraline. So there is no equivalent Ultraline to Sodo. This is where it gets dumb. So Sodo is this team where everything is ABS plastic, and there's stickers for extra detail. Shodo <laughs> is where the figures are pre-painted, but the weapons usually aren't. And there is, uh, that's where the Ultraman line is. That is Shodo Ultraman, although now Shodo Ultraman ended and now it is Chodo Ultraman is the current line. <laughs> Ellipses is true. Again, pardon my silence, but I needed to... In the speedrunner parlance, needed some serious time uh, for that one. This sticker is a little bit awkward because it's going over one smooth curved surface, but then also folding over a differently curved surface. And I don't like to get creases in the middle if I can avoid it. If creases are going to happen, I'd rather they're at the tips. But there we go. That is a fully stickered platform. Uh, just got to put his little wastily doodlies onto him. Uh, he's got the ones with the weapons and the ones without. I definitely need to get on Mandarake and order a couple more of these platform bodies so as I can have just a normal platform, A, but also B, so I can fix this unfortunate uh, situation that happened here. But how cute. Let's give him his... Uh... Thing.
Oh yeah, the holes are because the in Deno the platform body had like f four different armor sets that went on top of it. So uh, in Sodo they leave all the holes there so you can mount the armor on it. Or it's battle damage. <laughs> I actually was just opening a, or filming and opening a bunch of uh, Chodo Ultraman uh, boxes that I had basically stacking up next to this table because I'm very persnickety about how I film my candy toy packaging. Uh, and then a bunch of it was showing up whilst I was traveling around and, uh, and then it was also an easy thing to put off uh, when I was just feeling down, but been catching up on all that footage and organizing all the bits and pieces. Maybe you, know, you guys want to see? I want to see one. Where are they? Oh, they're all over. I'll, I'll pop one open so you can see what the, this is. The candy, by the way, I don't like it, so I'm gonna throw it out. But uh, I'll show you what a Chodo Ultraman thing looks like. I actually wanted to inspect my. <laughs> I'm gonna say something weird out loud. I wanted to inspect my Juggalus Juggler, so uh, I'm gonna go grab him. All right. Hey, it's me. <laughs> Tony. We got a reaction to that there, Juggalus Juggler. I still have to watch all of Orb. I need to get that domestic Orb Blu-ray set. So we got Juggalus Juggler. So here's the dumb thing about uh, Shoto and Chodo Ultraman. I don't know why they do this. Every single figure, right, in a series, the box is physically identical on almost every single side. Right? Except up here where they print the different names. That's his Ultraman Groove. I assume that's what Groove is supposed to be. I might be wrong. I can't tell. I think that's a B and not a P. I don't, I haven't seen Rube, so I don't know anything about the names. I just look on wikis. And then this obviously says Juggle is Juggler. Um, obviously, if you can read Katakana. Shodo Rider and Shodo X Rider get individual front box arts, so at a glance you can tell what's in each box. You can still tell what's in each box. They just print this image on the front of each one, and I don't get it. It's very annoying when you try to sell dupes of these at toy shows, and you have to tell everyone, don't worry, I can read this and tell you what's in here. Oh, but why do the Rider ones have their faces on them? I don't know, because Bandai's deranged about something. <laughs> anyway, juggle is juggler. So the way that Chodo tends to work now, right, is you get three figures, and then for each one there's an add-on set that has, like, sort of uh, Ultra Act City parts, but then also extra parts that go with the figures. So in the case of juggle is juggler, friggin' his sword and his ring are in there, and you kind of need those. So I'm gonna pop open juggle is juggler first. How many more times can we say Juggalus Juggler with a straight face? Millions. Like, it's it's not even an investment in box... Like, like, this is exciting box art with way more posed photos. Like, Ryder is just a headshot, and that's it. So I don't know, it's, it, it's equal amounts of effort in every, like, facet. Except, for, I don't, nah, I don't know. It's still printing unique boxes, that's the part. The fact that they still print a name up here, and I don't think that is a separate stamped tampo on a, like, it, it's, it looks too much like it's under the gloss coat. <laughs> it's just very weird. So, with Sodo, you are, as you saw, like putting stickers all over a figure and taking stuff off sprues with uh, Shodo and Chodo and Shodo X. Uh, also, this stuff is made of a softer PVC-like for the most part, whereas those are made of ABS. So, like, this frame is here, but it's way squishier. 
and you can just twist these things off like nothing. Just twist them off like skin tags. You can't twist skin tags off. That's that would probably hurt a whole lot. Okay, so we'll just give him his fists for now, I guess. We'll give him the open hands. Another weird thing about... Uh, so Shodo Rider has thigh swivels. Uh, Shodo, Shodo Ultraman doesn't have thigh swivels, but they have an open enough hip ball joint that you basically get a half a thigh swivel. It's a really weird design decision. <laughs> Talking about seven money? That's a lot of money. So yeah, this is if you just get Juggler's Juggler, this is all you get. However, if you then get uh oh, where is it? Ah. Add on set two, you get uh, because I opened one up already, you get a, a piece of road with a display stand and a house. So when I sell my dupes of these, what I do is I just, because I want all the city parts, I just take the juggler's juggler parts and I open up the spare one, throw them in, and reseal the bottom, and I just sell him with the extra parts uh, for the same price when I go to toy shows. So when people buy their candy toys off me, they're getting an enhanced experience. That's what they're getting. Uh, I want to save this one. It's another unique printing. They they print instructions for the add-on sets that are specific to each add-on set on the side. There's a lot of unique printing going on, except for the front art, and it's ah, uh, it's so so doy. All right, so uh, I already saw technically what this builds into, but. Here's parts for the house and his sword. And then here is the road and display stand and his ring and alternate chess piece whose plot point I have not seen so I don't actually understand what it's for. But the ring can go into the holdy hand. Yeah, I got fists in the holdy hands here. Two holdy hands, yeah. Hooray. It's kind of an unpleasantly tight fit, if I'm being honest. And there's alternate chest plate. So you can just pull that one off and then stick this one in. As I said, I only watched the first, I think, like six or so episodes, if I recall correctly, when it was on Crunchyroll. So I don't know what this means. I just know he's got it. Maybe he had that first and then not this. I don't I don't remember. It was a while ago. It was right after I watched Jeed, and I watched I watched a bunch of Orb, and I thought Orb was way better than Jeed, and then I and then I didn't continue watching it. And then they announced the Blu-rays, so then I thought, okay, I'm just going to wait for the Blu-rays. And where's that sword at? All right, sword. Just pinches right off there happily. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. So, back before the change uh, in the original Shodo versus lines for Rider and Ultraman, you'd get like a little foot stand that just clipped onto the back of the heel and it would have little holes for all the spare hands. Uh, they got rid of that when they changed to Shodo X and Shodo. 
And I don't mind, I think that that just meant that they had extra plastic budget or something. Um, but it does mean you need to get a little bag to put your figure in. IMO. How about check it out? It's our boy, Juggle's Juggler. And then if I were to build this little house, even though these are more ABS-y, they still just like pop right off the sprues. And the, the, the four sides are unique on this house, so I'm gonna build this one different than the other one. I keep calling it a house. It's clearly like a warehouse or a gymnasium or something. All right, so on this one, I've got the one without doors. So I'll do the one with doors on that side, connected to the one with all the little windows on this side. Yes, slightly inverted warehouse. Oh wait, does this not go in there? Oh, is that physically thicker? No way. <laughs> so there is only one way this goes together. Okay, never mind. They tricked me. I didn't know that. I, they do that with the hands, where the left side and the right side are different thicknesses, so you can't put a left hand on a right wrist. Didn't know they did that with these buildy bits, because they're so customizable when you get down to the, like, buildings and road parts that were in uh, Shodo Versus 2. Or not Versus 2, sorry, Chodo uh, Series 2. Yeah, I got two of these now. Because when it's just like these road pieces and little buildings that can be stackable or have different roof caps you can put on them, it's super customizable with these square holes underneath. Uh, and they kind of moved away from that so that now it's like, in this series is these things, the series after this with uh, with um, anime Ultraman and regular Ultraman and Zeton. Uh, the building is the, whatever it's called, the science building from Ultraman. Um and then, like, this, the one with Ultra 7, one of the add-on sets is just the Ultra Hawk. Yeah, these little display arms are cool. Because they work for any candy toy. So do uh, Tamashii stages, actually. Uh, they all use the same peg size. This way you can use this chunk of road, stick it into one of these three holes, stick this into Juggalus's, Juggalus Juggler's, just above his butt. We did it. right Cho don't <laughs> and who is this who else did I bring out here oh yeah this is Ultraman Groove is it Groob or Groove because I know the RB is Rube and this is this one has a Guru on the front so it's Guroob is it supposed to Groob okay because that's also how you write Groove so this is we could say this is a Groovy Ultraman <laughs> This plastic out of the way. Now, Ultraman Gru would just be like a fan name for Belial. Because, you know, Belial had a kid, and then he kind of gets like how Gru's whole thing is oh, I, I, now I have kids, and it's the whole thing. Uh, if I like Super Robot Wars, Aesthetics, and Gagagar, I'd recommend SD Cross Silhouette Gagagar. I, I always look at those things when they're in uh, Electronics Boutique up here, and they're neat, but there's something about the way that they SD where I'm kind of like, it's less SD and more regular D, but you just pulled off the forearms and the, or the, the biceps and the thighs. And it's clever, but it, it's, for some reason it, it doesn't hit me as hard as I thought it would. 
I was eyeballing the, I think they had like a Majin Kaiser as well. I wanted to like it more. But I also never built, I didn't buy it, I didn't build it or anything. So there might be, I guess there's part of the experience in there too. Yeah, you can also like chain these, uh, these road sections together. Uh, either side by side or you can make the road longer. Now jugglers, jugglers just hovering over traffic. It's a fusion of the three of them. I thought there were only two in Rube. Which I never watched, so I'm sure this actually makes complete sense. I'm just being the naive guy who's like, Rube? I thought there were only two. What do you mean three? Is the, does the plot advance or something? <laughs> so we got, what is it? We've got Orb and Jeed on Blu-ray now. It's just those two, right? Along with the, the retro series. All due respect to the retro series, I would like to be able to watch modern Toku on Blu-ray as well. I think that's like a hundred times more exciting to me because that's the stuff that feels like it's legally harder to pull off. And I want to watch Rube. What do I make of the old Power Core combiner line? I like a lot of the Power Core stuff. Um, the uh, the core figures I thought were some of the some of the strongest and most immediately forgotten Transformers toys we had in a while. Oh man, Groob's shoulder ball joint. Snaps on, but it's hell loose. That might just be mold release. I've had these things like self-tighten before, but uh, might have to fix that up. So yeah, as you can see on the Ultraman, right? They skipped a thigh swivel for the sake of aesthetics, but I like how there's kind of a thigh swivel still, just with the range of the ball socket connection and the way it's kind of diagonal down. Uh, the Ultraman show of the Shodo lines, I think the Ultraman line is better than the rider line uh the rider line always felt like it was kind of just doing what it's supposed to do and that's it the ultraman line very quickly got into like these add-on sets uh it just felt like it was more excited to be happening uh i think the figures physically felt a little better than most of the rider shoto figures uh i would i would go as far as to say i think it is the best ultraman toy line uh in that they made all of them with effect parts and they're inexpensive and quite posable and I think rendered quite well and if you want to chase down extra add-on parts and web exclusives those fill in even more gaps uh, it's just a really nicely complete toy line even though there are more waves coming out it's just at any given moment I'm like you know what if you stopped I would feel like it's still a nicely complete toy line they've released like the original Ultraman in just about every version you can think of, some of which twice. Ultra 7 has come out three times uh, with just minor little tweaks here and there uh, in two cases. Uh, they they just redid Taro again in Shodo, or in, uh, in Chodo, which I think is just the Shodo one with a translucent blue gem instead of a painted blue gem, or, uh, you know, timer. But yeah, like, I like Rider shows more, but... As figures, I love these Ultraman. Uh, I wish I was into Ultraman series more, but it's just it's just my taste. Like I need stuff to move in a certain way, and Ultraman's way of moving is often just on the other side of the line of where I like things, with obvious exceptions. And uh, Orb was definitely doing a lot that I liked uh, in the opening episodes. 
I enjoyed Jeed, but boy howdy, Orb was so immediately better the moment I started it. <laughs> At least for me, I should say. Better for me. I was just telling someone at cards about the uh, the Unite uh, EX, like the Unite, like um, the Japanese release Power Core figures, and how one of them was literally called Race Master, and that that was pretty funny. Because <laughs> they were all called code name something Master, and so the the race car one <laughs> it's called Race Master. <laughs> Cracking the seal to get Groob's uh, bonus parts out. Saw someone was taken off for the night. Have a good night if you are taken off. Uh, Keenan Thompson. It's two o'clock. It can't be two o'clock here. No. Okay. It's like if it's two a.m. in Ontario, then what the hell have I been doing? Yeah, we're at the two and a half hour mark. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish opening this set, show you some of this building play pattern stuff, and then. Uh, and then I will call it for myself. So for example, right? One thing, that I think this, this series did a little better than Ultra Act. A little better. Only because of, like, physical weight. Or the beam parts. They're just so spot on for what I would want out of these things. Like, I swapped the hand... He's shooting a laser. Mmm. I just love this. I love the way it turned out. The smaller scale of the figure just does so many favors to this as well. Like, I don't actually know the motion for this beam. I'm just, <laughs> just doing the Ultraman thing. Yeah. I know the fig arts and, and some of the ultra acts have done beam parts well, you know, as well. There's just something about it when it's on these little guys where it's like, it's so seamless. It just works. So that's one of his bonus parts. His other bonus part is uh, his fancy ring. Which I am assuming he points at people to be all like. Buy my new toy! Uh, did I ever get either of the Computron sets? I have both Computrons. And I came up with backstory for why there's two of them. love this. Available now! <laughs> Works with all your existing roleplay toys! Also, these little guys, because again, because they're little, <laughs> but complete. It's just more manageable having, like, entire ultra families. And because they're little, you can totally do the thing where you're like, oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I don't know. You can do you can do that with the fig arts as well. Obviously, I'm not trying to say you can't, but it's something. There's something streamlined about about this ultra series that's so satisfying beyond the uh, the rider version. It's not to denigrate and spit all over Shoto Rider. It's just like I feel like Sodo. There's more palpable excitement in these figures of trying to push limits and do so much. And I feel that same excitement in this Ultraman line and this line's uh, sibling rider line always feels like it does enough and then goes like, all right, I'm done. And like, it's enough, absolutely, but it's it's not as exciting. Uh, it's, it's weird to explain. Uh, 
Oh yeah, Tony, like exaggerated arm sets to do the growth thing would be kind of cool. Like honestly, from other angles too. Uh, there is no grid man in this. It's just the mini plot as far as I know. Uh, Gridman would be an easy fit into this line. Uh, it, I think it's kind of a shame that they have not been able to do that. Which one was Double Clutch? Was that the one, like, the kind of ugly monster truck thing? Yeah, I think I think Bandai has the license to be able to do mini plot specifically. Um, given how many other companies are doing Gridman figures right now. Oh, Double Clutch was the rally car. Was that Race Master? Was Double Clutch Race Master? The red version of Double Clutch? Yeah, okay, yeah, that one sucked. <laughs> so I was going to say, the monster truck one was kind of uggo, but it was a solid little toy. Yeah, Race Master Double Clutch is, is a bummer, because I, I was hyped for that one until I handled him, and it was like, man. And boy, the rest of the line like shows that one up. Uh, Al Smith, have I seen those figureize kits? I have. Uh, I built a figureize original before the current version when they were bigger of uh, Common Rider Skull many years ago. It was a V-build for it on the channel. Uh, I haven't handled any of the new figureize, though, just because it's like, at a certain point, it's kind of like, I don't want to buy everything, even if it looks cool. And so the figureize uh, standard, I think the current one's called, is an easy line for me to look at and go, like, that's really cool, and I don't think I need to own it. Someday I'll, I'll probably grab one just to try building it, but... I haven't felt the need. I, I, I try not to buy a lot of kits now because for many years over the 2010s, I bought tons of kits, often going like, this for YouTube, this one's for YouTube. Still haven't built them. Uh, <laughs> so I just try, I, I talk myself out of buying kits a lot now. By the way, the house parts uh, that came with those uh, Groob bits, another display arm, another chunk of road, uh, actual little residences. This one's a fresh one. And, uh, yeah, they're double-sided, so these are the backyards. That's really cute. This doesn't seem to mount onto anything, which is definitely not the usual case for this series. This is, I guess, like, along with this, where they're making more standalone pieces. Uh, but then you also get an under-construction version uh, of the building. Uh, no roof slot, but it's got the same bottom as it does the top, so you could stack two of these. Uh, unfortunately, in this series, this is also a real big bummer. So these are the three extra sets. Usually, you'd get two of this and two of this and one of this. This one, you got two of this and two of this and one of this. So I only have one unconstructed building. Uh, and it means when I sell my spare seven, it's going to be an extra five bucks, but he's going to come with all of this, because I looked it up, because I haven't watched seven, and that thing goes with him. So this is all just one set. And it's the same thing with the, the set with the Ultraman 80 um, and, and Anime Ultraman. Sorry, not, not 80. It's just Anime Ultraman and Zeton and Original Ultraman. They come with three of these that form one whole diorama, but you still get, you know, like one, two, two. So you get like two thirds of a second diorama. It's a bit of a bummer because up until this, this one, up until uh, Chodo 3, the extras of these uh, bonus sets would just give you more and more building parts. And it was really fun. And it's astonishing to me that the most Lego-like of them is the one you only get one of. Anyway. That's a shame. Uh, still, like, I have so many building parts from the other sets that I have plenty I can play around with, but I feel like I haven't... Um, oh, no, because the next one was the one with... Uh, was it Dinah and Tiga? Is the one I never got, uh, Chodo 5. And the extras for that was more vehicles, if I recall correctly. So it's cool that they're doing vehicles, but like, I like this stuff a lot more because this is, again, part of why I love this Ultraman line is they just inundate you with dioramas to get across their scale. 
and and, and diorama pieces, I should say, that are uh, in, like like Lego. They're like interchangeable things. It's a really cool play pattern, and I feel like they're moving away from it. But I also haven't seen what Chodo looks like past uh, Wave Four, Wave Five. Um, I do want to get some time. I just I had so many of these unopened. I was like, I should wait till I open these and you know organize them all, sort them into their little bags as I like to do, because I'm a weirdo. Uh, Yeah, it's gonna pop open uh, the new ultra, well, new you know, from a couple months ago, Ultra Seven, and then we'll be done for this stream. I just want to get a look at them. Now that I've gone this far. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Huh. I'm Ultraman Groob, and I got a bone to pick. <laughs> I'm here to tell you about why I didn't like the Star Wars movie. <laughs> oh, yeah, if they did a, a Godzilla, like a mini monster arts. Oh! I need to drink Coke Zero. Because let me tell you, the kaiju figures at this scale that they've done are awesome. And like one of them is Red King. That's like part of the work done for basically a Godzilla. Insert me saying they all look the same to me. Candy rain. Hey, by the way, let me just throw it out there. Thank you all for tuning into the stream and hanging out. I know that there's fancy pants football going on. I know it's Sunday night. And I know these streams are presented very much as not toy streams. They're primarily card streams, and then they turn into toy streams later. But it's fun doing them. And I always want to do more. And I always convince myself that they are a treat that I don't deserve because I haven't done proper videos enough yet. And I've mentioned that many times. And people constantly tell me, but we like it when you do the streams. It's like a video. And I'm like, no, you're absolutely correct. This is just me explaining my self-destructive mental cycles. <laughs> All right, this is, so this is the third Ultra 7 they've done. And I believe that this one's special power is translucent eyes, or translucent plastic for the eyes. I guess for the whole head, actually. I just got to look underneath the, the ball socket joint. That is pretty friggin' sharp. Oh, and his joints feel nice. Ultra 7 is uh, is one of my favorite Ultras whose show I've never watched. Uh, I just like Ultra 7. Because I like, I like Zero a whole lot. And he's Zero's dad, so he's intrinsically tied. You know? To, hey, you get... Go lie down for a second. Get over that movie you didn't like. It's not really compound eyes so much as it is, like weird layered alien eyes also he's currently bald don't worry I'll fix that they don't make you buy an add-on pack to get the you know rest of his hair the add-on pack has the one he can he can hold I believe It. 
How's this going? Yeah, that's nice and tight too. Mm. Let's give him some fists. Let's give him some fists. Oh, but man, like Ultraman Taro, right? The the Chodo version, it just gives you everything, obviously, again. But they did a whole thing where like his hands on this side have a longer stem and cut off here, and then there's swappable wrists for whether or not he's got a bracelet on, or if he's got a different bracelet on, or... You know, there's like a bracelet, another bracelet, and no bracelet. And I looked up on the wiki what they all were back when the first version came out, so I could piece together whose parts go with what, and I don't remember anymore. This ought to fit in the all track box. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can I can guarantee mathematically this does fit into the Ultra Act box. Uh, so the rest of his hands are here. He's got open hands and he's got fizzed hands. What's really freaking cool though is in 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 uh, Shota Ultraman, they eventually got to the part where it's like there's effect parts for all of this. There's like combo beam effect parts, uh, and then like there's a web exclusive where everyone who has capes get their capes. Oh, it's so freaking cool. The capes one also comes with Mother and Father of Ultra. The Ultra Act boxes uh, were for if you wanted a nicer looking, slightly slimmer box to keep your figure in instead of the original box, if I recall correctly. Like, that was the whole thing. Oh, holy crap. The Hawk has friggin' decals. <laughs> That's insane. I assumed it was just gonna be painted and look kind of like a nice toy, but no, there's like full-on clear back decals. God. It's a whole thing. Like, there's also Ultra 7 stuff in here. It's just two extra things. You get his uh, laser, and then you get a hand holding a slugger. calling it, by the way, a fizzit laser because I only ever remember specium ray. <laughs> and I know that they are not all called specium rays. And I'm being a nice, good friend and not just calling them all specium rays. Oh, let's take a look at these things. Like, look at this. Never crash this. Real swooshable angles here. Wait a second. There's no ins. <laughs> oh, okay. So the one that does have printing on the inside is this one. Okay. 
I was about to say, I thought for a second, I was like, there's no instructions for the decals, but they printed on the inside of this box. And only this box. Yeah, the other ones are blank inside. Yet, they use the same box art on every single one. I just don't... Mm. Alright, got a little flight stand here, eh, which does mount on the bottom of this one. It's a little needle plane. It's ridiculous. I love it. So I'm going to do the decals for this some other time. I don't really want to do them right now. But I want to put the planes together. I did it in the wrong order. Ahem. That's neat! Oh, you know what? I can throw this on here. Yes, the iconic scene. Remember that time Ultra 7 was surfing on the Ultra Hawk? Uh, yes, can confirm. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to do these decals later. I don't really want to... As, as relaxing as it was, doing this very low amount of stickers Soto once was about enough as far as my fingers wanted to go. Uh... I would want to dedicate, like, an entire thing and not preamble it with an hour and a half of opening cards before. <laughs> um, anyway, I think that's all for the stream. Uh, we're just about to hit the three-hour mark, so once again, a short stream, then ballooned out of control. Uh, hey, uh, pop on to the archive and throw a comment in there, too, if you want to. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, let people know that these streams are things. Um, and, uh, hey, thanks for being cool. And what else is coming in the pipes? Uh, still filming Siege Megatron. I still have to write the script for it, and I want to write a script for it because I want to be uh, clear in my wording about how I think he's categorically worse than Siege Optimus. Uh, Earthrise isn't out in Canada yet, so I, I ain't got none of that. Probably going to be out soon. It's coming out on Amazon.ca. Uh, it's marked as coming out March 1st. So... If I pick up some Earthrise, I'll probably try to film that first. Uh, I still want to film Siege things. I was at, at the toy show, I was talking to someone about how I still, someday, I want to pop out of nowhere with the last two Fall of Cybertron Bruticus Deluxe reviews that I never did of the two flying guys. Uh, just, just, just pop those out of nowhere, see how many people go like, Why are you doing this? <laughs> and then just tell them, like, Oh, you don't know? What's wrong with you? Um... But yeah, I, I, I want to finish up Siege Megatron and then uh, put together a little talky piece about the, the cell animated ones. Uh, 3A stuff I'm feeling pretty cool about. Uh, also, at the toy show, I picked up uh, Civil Warrior General Grant 
And uh, Civil Warrior General Grant is a really fun toy, and he's very straightforward, that Civil Warrior General Grant. Uh, I like saying his full name as well, uh, so I, I probably could film him pretty easily. Uh, Cyberverse Abominus, oh, that's another one I want to pop up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sigma 7, I kind of just want February to not happen since so much is going on in March. <laughs> relatable, not, not specifically February for me, but relatable. I know that feeling. <laughs> um, what else is going on? Yeah, TCG videos coming, uh, my Energon Invitational deck and Sealed Pool, and then an opening of the Energon Edition. I'm going to probably just back-to-back -back those and not worry about having too much TCG, because it's the start of a month, so who cares? Whatever. I just reviewed it. I did a review. I, I'm allowed now. Uh, I do own the rest of Groin. Uh, I, I, my, my story I always tell is, it took nearly a year for me to fix uh, Siegfried, and it just meant I didn't want to talk about Groin anymore, but it's been a couple years since then, so hooray. <laughs> Maybe I'm down to talk about Groin again. Uh, for those of you who don't get the joke, it's Orden. This is going, this is an old joke. They used a font that at a glance, I thought it said groin. So he's always been groin to me. Um, what else is happening? Uh, I have a, it's on my site. I quietly put it up, uh, for something I applied to, but I put together a video CV, uh, and I, and I made a new cover letter and a new resume and I'm very happy with them. But I, I've, I've been assembling a, uh, on my page, uh, a sub page, which is something I just send when I'm applying for freelance stuff, and it's video CV, and I'm happy with it. And if you find it, there's uh, some work I've been doing that's embedded on there. So there's, you can see the boring non-toy things I do. Well, one of them. There are two of them. Um, what else is happening? Just seeing if I can rattle off some more life updates before I go. Uh, I'm gonna try cooking some mackerel tonight. It's bone-in, but now I learned that in Japan there's a whole thing where it's bone-in, but you grill it, and then you just pick at it with chopsticks, and that makes the bone-in make sense. And it tastes really good, except for the bone part last time, because I put it over rice, so it got very complicated. So if I just have the mackerel with some grated daikon uh, and soy sauce just on its own, on a plate, mmm, yeah. I might do that tonight. I might do that tonight. Uh, anything else happening? I've been keeping up with Masterpiece Toys, actually, to be honest. I just haven't, <laughs> haven't done videos of them, because it's a very easy thing to put off. But uh, I, actually, I actually like that hound. And me and, uh, and HardReturn.net appear to have hounds that didn't break. So it's very... It is biasing me incredibly, because I think Hound has a beautiful transformation. Uh, doubly so, when he doesn't break, he's great. Uh... But I, I see plenty of ways he could break, and unfortunately, one of those ways is a little heads up for y'all. Spread the word. His instructions lead you to break him. Because his instructions are terrible! They are really bad! His instructions are awful, and there's even an update sheet in the box to try to get you to not break it, but it still is unclear, and, and you thought, you thought, like... Y'all might think these instructions are bad. These are bigger, clearer pictures than what the hound, the, the MP Hound instructions are like. This is, man, uh, a masterpiece toy that sells for over 12k yen should have a booklet. Hound and New Bumblebee have unfolding sheets, and it is below par. And on Hound. It will lead to people breaking the toy if they just follow the instructions, in my opinion. Uh, if not, at least causing enough micro-stress to then see fractures. Because they just don't tell you to unlock a part, or at least they don't in a way that's visible. Uh, anyway, I'm not actually, like, bitingly mad. I just think it's extremely frustrating to see that on a Masterpiece toy that is... Like I said, he's as far as I know, he's generally over 12k yen. Uh, you know, now on sale on Amazon because whatever, but it's also a disservice to the folks who worked on that figure because it is a good design. It is a good transforming figure uh, design. Uh, I think that its biggest problem is that it's painted everywhere, like everywhere, um, which I think is causing a lot of undue friction. And yeah, there's an addendum sheet that zooms in on some stuff, but like it's there's still other stuff that needs to be expanded on, in my opinion. Uh, 
Like, there's other stuff in there that should be expanded as well. There should have been at least another addendum sheet. Um, I just can't believe unfolding, like, an unfolding one sheet as the instructions for that toy. It's, it's ridiculous to me. Uh, I'm harder on, on, I'm harder on official masterpieces for that because third-party companies have folks who may not have gone through proper design education for toys who could easily just like, by the time they finish that project, they just, you know, kind of fart out these instructions. And it's like, all right, I get it. Like you, you finish the toy and that's the main thing. But like on a Takara Tomy masterpiece level, it, it shouldn't be that way. And I, I don't think any of the folks who are designing the figures are the ones to yell at. Uh, it, it is another department. I don't know who they are, but they are, they are not doing right by some of the incredibly talented people that are working there. Uh, and there's no way to get... Th there's no kind of petition to make out of this. There's no real way to get this word out other than just yelling a lot, and that's all I do. But uh, on Hound, it really irked me because, like, it's making that toy get a bad rap that it doesn't deserve. Uh, not, and that's, that's outside of the part where things are breaking. I think that that's also... I think that's just happening for some folks. I think that the amount of paint on things that are locking tabs and that are also hinges, uh, in it just depends on your climate. Like, and also, uh, someone else was talking to me about this at the toy show, and I agreed. Hound shipped during a cold snap, and I think that a hound in a box sitting on a porch during a cold snap did no favors to the hound toy, if that makes any sense. Uh... Well, that was a rant. I was, I, I'm thinking about it because the Hound box is right here. Because I, I, my Masterpiece toys, I film the boxes for opening B-roll and then I throw the boxes out. Uh, or I don't throw them out, I recycle them downstairs. But uh, I was just, I was staring at him. And I was like, yeah, they did you wrong. <laughs> Everyone did you wrong. Anyway. What was it? 20 minutes ago, I was like, well, I'm going to stop the stream now. So uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all later. Always on uh, always on Twitter. And uh, if you're a patron, uh, there is a Discord, which I think I had a proper undying link for. But let me know if that's not working, and uh, I'll catch you all later. Ciao.